Stones. Welcome to the ARC pregame show presented by United Rentals. Hello, ARC pregame show presented by United Rentals star Mark the Phantom Low here with Jordan Georgeson and Kenny Parker down on the sidelines as we are getting ready for a fantastic game here from Beaver Stadium on the campus of American River College in lovely Sacramento, California. It's NorCal playoffs. It's the semifinals and the number two seed, the American River College Beavers at nine and one on the season against the number three seed, City College of San Francisco, also nine and one, nine and zero until their final game of the regular season when they lost to San Mateo. Jordan Georgeson is here with me on the calls we mentioned Kenny Parker down on the field so let's get some uh, impressions from a couple of guys who've watched American River the entire season Kenny if we can we'll start with you you have been enamored with the Beavers defense the entire season so why don't you give us a little thumbnail sketch of that defense they're they're just suffocating Phantom. they're suffocating they swarm to the ball and they play as a really tight well-oiled unit Josh Tremaine is the guy that just jumps off the page, number 44 linebacker. He has 113 tackles this season. The next closest player is is like half of that. So he's just on every play, swarming everywhere, but they're all someone's always there with him picking him up they they're an incredible well-oiled machine yeah absolutely if you look at the numbers Kenny it's incredible as we said they, they average they give up just about 13 points a game and a lot of that probably is their second and third units when they had blowouts uh, but if you look at their numbers they only have 20 sacks on this season they have 66 tackles per loss which is respectable and as you mentioned Josh Tremaine leads them with uh, 113 tackles but they have so many guys between 25 and 35 and 40 tackles it really gives credence to what you're saying that, that's a real team defense out there yeah they're strong with their help and it's something that i've noticed you know this season on the sideline is the camaraderie and kind of the brotherhood of this team it is off the charts and it starts with the defense well uh kenny's uh t- keeps his eyes on the defense jordan uh, has been up here in the booth we keep our eyes on the offense and jordan you know we have been very impressed i think the first thing we have to talk about when you talk about the offense for america river is kenny leith i mean this is a guy who split time last year with matt carlisle and matt has moved on kenny comes back for his second year we've talked about it injury in his high school career kind of curtailed that and uh, i just want you to talk about what we've seen as far as a maturity and the difference from kenny from last year to this year it's night and day different you know having seen Kenny play in high school and covered him there I've said that this is a kid that whoever gets him in college is going to be very happy because they're getting a steal you know the first year he comes in he's platooning you could see the flashes of brilliance but he's kind of getting the offense down this year he's running this thing like a well-oiled machine 26 touchdowns to one interception he can march the beavers down the field he can pick you apart he can beat you through the air he's okay handing the ball off five six times in a row he is a pure team leader and he has this offense down to a t to the point that i think he could be teaching classes at this school about it absolutely and also, you, you take a look at the American River College offense, and they have so many weapons. You liken it to the 49ers on the professional level. You know, you've got uh, Kenny Leith back there, but you've got Robert Freeman, and you've got the four running backs, and you've got Stevenson, and you've got Baker. You've got so many guys. I don't know if we've ever seen it, how impressive it is to have such a comprehensive offensive attack. It really is impressive, and I think that's what makes this team so tough to defend. I mean, they're averaging 406 yards a game. 43 points a game. And if you look at the balance, 195 rushing yards, 210 passing yards a game for this team. 
and you almost have to pick your poison. Hey, we're not going to get beat deep. Okay, that's fine. So we're just going to have this rushing attack pick you apart or these tight ends pick you apart or, you know, Leaf get you low. Or, hey, you know, we got to take everything short away while Robert Freeman can beat anyone in a, run, in a sprint down the field. So this is a team that you really just have to pick how they're going to beat you and hope you picked correct because there are so many different ways they can attack you. They have speed. They have power. They have everything that you want in an offense. This team is a coach's dream, really, an offensive coordinator's dream and a defensive coordinator's nightmare. We'll look ahead to their to their matchup against the defense of City College in just a second. But, Kenny, I want to come back down to you. We're talking about specifically this game. You know, uh, we've seen the Beavers play against all kinds of different teams, dual-threat quarterbacks, passing quarterbacks. We're seeing Dorian Hale from uh, City College as one of the top quarterbacks probably in the state. He averages about 200. 80 uh, uh, total yards per game, plus he sat out a bunch of a bunch of fourth quarters, and so he's thrown for 23. He's rushed for 11. So, what do you think the uh, uh, the Beavers defensively are going to do to try to combat Dorian Hale? The thing that they've been talking about down here on the sideline is assignments, staying, doing your job, and you know that's how you combat an offense like this is you don't make big mistakes because they're capable of making huge plays. So they need to be disciplined. And, and I think that's the word for today, and just execute on defense. They have the playmakers. They turn the ball over over two times a game. So, th- you know, that's something that they're going to try to do as well, but they, they really do need to stay disciplined against this high-powered attack. Yeah, and if you look at the defense, as we talked about a couple of minutes ago, if you look at the defense number-wise, 20 sacks on the season, which is good but not overwhelming. Right. And uh, do you think that the, the Beavers have to kind of up that number a little bit today? I know they, they funnel a lot of their defense toward their linebackers, but do you think they need to put even more pressure on the quarterback in this one? Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's he's talented, and like any other quarterback, the more pressure you can get on him, the better it's going to go for, for your unit. So um, I'm sure that's a key for them today. Well, that's uh, Kenny Parker down on the field. He's talking a little defense. Uh, Jordan Georgeson up here. We're talking offense. And, Jordan, now it's time to look at the defense for uh, for City College of San Francisco. Kind of a, a very similar defense as far as numbers, uh, points, and yards allowed. But uh, they do it a lot of different ways. We were talking with Kenny about the sack numbers. Uh, the Rams with 36 sacks on the season and 92 tackles per loss. Those are huge numbers. So what are the uh, – offensively, what do you look for the Beavers to try to do uh, from the get-go? I think the Beavers need to come out with their balance attack and they need to kind of see what the City College team is throwing at them. We're talking about a team that in 10 games has 36 sacks, 12 interceptions, 6 fumble returns. So if you're getting 4 sacks a game, about 9 tackles for loss a game, and you're essentially forcing 2 turnovers a game, you're going to cause a lot of headaches. And this is an American River team that takes care of the football. They only have one interception this season. So this is going to be an interesting chess match to see how the Beavers kind of combat this. If I'm American River, I come out and I start with a balanced attack and kind of see what's working, what doesn't. You're going to have to stay fluid in this game because this City College team is going to make a lot of adjustments, and it's going to be a really interesting chess match in this one. But what I'm really interested in is this offensive line against this defensive line. We've talked about this ARC offensive line all season long. How are they going to stop a defense that's allowing only 54.9 rushing yards per game? I mean, that's going to be the battle to win this. And if, if American River can establish the run early, I think they'll be successful in this All run. right. And uh, quickly, Kenny Parker down on the sidelines. Do you love the defense? Uh, give me a prediction on the score for today's game. Uh, I'm going to say ARC 27 and the opponents 20. I like that. He doesn't even dignify them, Jordan, with a name. He just calls them the opponents. So, Kenny calls it 27-20. Jordan, what's your call? You know, I'm going to go a little uh, lower scoring. I think points are going to be a premium here. I'm going to say ARC 21, City College 17. Fantastic. Great job, guys. That is your ARC pregame show. We're back with the uh, some starting lineups, the kickoff, and this game. It's going to be a fantastic semifinal game between American River and City College of San Francisco. This is ARC Football presented by the Stones Radio Networks. American River College is a top-tier community college sports program that provides student-athletes with the opportunity to thrive both athletically and academically. ARC Athletics is currently ranked fifth in the state and second in Northern California. With over 19 sports programs, our athletes compete with the region's best athletes. Our diverse and dedicated coaching staff helps athletes develop the skills necessary to compete at the next level. Start your community college athletics journey with us. American River College, Sacramento's best athletic program. Go Beavers. I love baking. 
I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Placer County's best kept secret is back for another exciting summer at historic McBean Stadium. 33 action-packed home games loaded with fun for the whole family. Local beer, wine, and eats. Fireworks, giveaways, theme nights, kid zone, and more. Come join in the fun and enjoy small-town baseball with Major League Entertainment. Tickets on sale now at LincolnPotters.com. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Hi, I'm Monica from Ace Body Shop in Town. We are a family oriented business. We've been in business for over 30 years. We are located downtown Lincoln at 333 Lincoln Boulevard in Lincoln, California. We do automotive repair and 24 hour towing. Our phone number is 916 645 2859, or you can find us on the web. American River College is a top-tier community college sports program that provides student-athletes with the opportunity to thrive both athletically and academically. ARC Athletics is currently ranked fifth in the state and second in Northern California. With over 19 sports programs, our athletes compete with the region's best athletes. Our diverse and dedicated coaching staff helps athletes develop the skills necessary to compete at the next level. Start your community college athletics journey with us. American River College, Sacramento's best athletic program. Go Beavers! Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kinds of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco, we love to see you. Fast flung on and missed. He got him on strikes at 86, the off meter. Bruno strikes out the side. Potters get the win, 8-5. to five. Sanchez, one on four. She gets it back, trying to get it back to Gallegos. What a spin move. Her shot is blocked. She has a control, puts in the goal. Witt trying to set it, and she sets it over for Molly Harrison, pokes it over. Short set for Barrios, and her slam goes out of play. He's going to look that way. Now he's going to duck down the middle. He's got a guy wide open at the 18. Get it. That's Robert Freeman. And Robert's trying to make a couple of moves. He comes back to the 15. Comes down to the 10. He gets a block to the 5. Burt and his broad jump, 99th percentile, all while being in the 96th percentile at weight. Wow. So I know you just had a baby, so you were really into this percentile I, I know about thing. The percentiles, so you yeah. seem very comfortable with that, yeah. Yeah, this. Yes. Ooh, Wait. <laughs> you may not see that ten dollars, my friend. That woman does not well, like to fork he, over the cash. He, I heard him say he'd pay you next Tuesday. So <laughs> that, you know that's I mean. right. I didn't bring pad and paper, so I don't well, know what to tell you. What's going to happen when I come back? First so of all, I we take notes. We may end up in one, uh, especially on, on this episode of the Stones and Toys Show. <laughs> oh, snap. Uh,
Welcome to another American River College Athletics broadcast brought to you by Stones Radio Networks. Coming to you live from Beaver Stadium on the beautiful campus of American River College in Sacramento, California. It's almost time for Beavers football. Today's game is sponsored by United Rentals, Ace Body and Towing, the Lincoln Potters Baseball Club, Grateful Bread, Super Taco, and Taylor Builders. To get you ready for today's matchup, let's send it up to the booth to the legend Mark the Phantom Lowe to bring you all of today's action. It's Beaver football, and it starts now. And welcome back to the uh, press box here at Beaver Stadium on the campus of America River College. As uh, our announcer just said, Mark the Phantom Lowe here with you. Jordan Georgian to my side. He is our color analyst today down on the field on the sidelines. We have Kenny Parker. We'll check with Kenny in just a couple of minutes. And, Jordan, we've got ourselves. Uh, this is going to be, I mean, I love every American River College football game, but this one is shaping up to be a dynamite game, a semifinal game, trying to get a spot in the NorCal final. Yeah, if you're a football fan, this is a game that you got to watch. Two teams that could not be more evenly matched. I want to know how they decided who got the two seed and who got the three. I think they might have just had to flip a coin for this because you do not have two more teams that are more evenly matched than we have here today. Yeah, I think the de- determining factor might have been the fact that uh, the Beavers are a conference champion and the uh, City, Com- uh, City uh, College lost their only game to San Mateo in the final of that league, so they came in second. So the Rams are kicking off from our right to our left. Sends it down there. That's Joseph Oliveira with it down there to Robert Freeman down there at the 5, the 20. He gets up to the 25, 30, 35, dances outside to the 36. It looked like we might have a flag on the play as we will start it. Uh, We'll wait and see, Jordan, where we start that first drive. Yeah, it looks like that was a good return there by Jacobs, but I think it's going to be coming back. So not the start you want if you're the Beavers, but, hey, with this offense down the field, you can move down the field quick as Kenny Leith comes out there to try to lead the Beavers down for an opening score. Yeah, Monty Jacobs actually taking that one back. He is in the backfield. Uh, he shares time with Joshua Moore, Casey Riley, Ture Hendrick, Kenny Leith, the quarterback for the Beavers. Let's take a look at the Beavers' offensive lineman on the uh, on the front there, we have number 63, Christian Newberry Jones, number 75, Puka Kelakuli, number 52, Matthew Ouellette, number 72, Ryan Cheeseman, and number 68, the big man, Mason Baker, six foot eight and 380 pounds. So that's your offensive line, which, Jordan, we talk about a lot. We don't mention their names, but they've been a key part of the success this year for the Beavers. They really have, and they have a tall order up against them today against a defensive front that is basically getting, I think, nine tackles for, per loss or yeah. for loss per game yeah. and 36 sacks on the season. So it's going to be interesting to see who wins in the trenches. But American Weaver certainly has the size to do so. First and 10 on the 10. The ball moved back to the 10 after the penalty. Kenny Leith in the shotgun. Avanti Jacobs behind him at number two. We've got motion from the left side to the right. Turns around, hands it to Jacobs, trying to find a hole. Gets around that left side. 15 Gets up to uh, over the 20-yard line. That's going to be a first down carry. Should be a first down carry for the Beavers. Good start, Jordan. And how about Jacobs right there? Just having enough balance and keeping those legs churning, finding something. It looked like that was going to be a play stuff for two or three yards, but Jacobs just found a way to turn that into a big gain. Let's see if they give him the first down. No, they're going to mark it uh, a little bit short of the first down, bring up a second and one. But, again, we talk about the defensive line and defensive uh, unit for the uh, Rams with uh, the tackles per loss and all the sacks and so you want to try to get dominance right up early in the beginning of the game second down just a yard to go for the Beavers Leith again in the shotgun turns he's going to hand it again to Jacobs he's got a big hole cut through to 30 35 tries to cut to the outside 37 40 yard line he goes out of bounds at the 42 yard line a big run for Avanti Jacobs and a first down for the Beavers and coming up against a defense it's allowing only 55 rush yards per game you got about 30 right now on this opening drive that's what you want to see if you're the Beavers establish this run early and really keep this defense on their heels and maybe the offensive lineman knew we mentioned their names as uh, Jones and Kelakuli, Olet, Cheeseman and Baker opening up a couple of holes there and uh, like you said 33 yards total yards here in the first two plays of the game both of them hand off to Avanti Jacobs, number two, a sophomore from Oak Ridge High School. Jacobs with 584 total yards on the ground coming into this one. Beavers with a first down at the 43. Going to be a fake handoff. No, it's a handoff. Going to run the right side to the 45-46. Kenny Leith carried through the fake on the play. About a three-yard gain uh, for the Beavers. Why not ride the hot hand right there with Jacobs? Moving the ball, and at this point, you know, four-yard gains, that's all you really need. Just keep moving forward if you're ARC. Absolutely, and uh, 
you've got uh, you're trying to get that offensive line to to achieve uh, dominance hopefully but just uh, a little bit of an edge here early in the game you've got the two good or three good running plays now it's second down about eight yards to go ball sitting at the 46 yard line of the beavers got two out to the right one spread wide to the left for kenny leith the quarterback with 26 touchdown passes, just one interception. He turns around, hands it off to Jacobs. Jacobs comes through, cut down at about the 48 and falls forward to the 49. Send up a third down, Jordan, at about four. Yeah, this is going to be a weird third down of how you play this. You're running the ball so well, but it does feel like San Francisco's kind of wised up a little bit. So we'll see if this is where you put the ball in the air to leaf the whole time as you get the Swiss Army knife Freeman coming in and Joshua Moore as well. Exactly. I was just about to mention you get used to Jacobs in the backfield if you're City College and all of a sudden, Joshua Moore comes in, or Casey Riley, or Tura Hendricks. So third down, four yards, call it five yards to go. Yeah, at the 49. Beavers looking over to the side to get the call. They've got two wide receivers out to the left. Tight formation on the short side of the field to the right. Leith back to pass, going to throw it quickly. It's a slant. And it is going to be incomplete at about the 46-yard line. A little bit behind the receiver, and it'll bring up a fourth down. It looks like there was a little bit of a hit by Jalen Henderson right there, the sophomore defensive back out of Richmond, California, coming from De Anza. He's the one that came up with the hit there that kind of jarred that loose. But I think that's when you want to see if you're AR against a defense that has 36 sacks. Maybe a lot of quick strikes in the passing game to start and see what you can open up in the deep ball. Right. They tried the, the quick slant just a little bit behind him, and a good play by Henderson sets up uh, the punt. It'll be Andres Prieto punting number 41. Looks like number nine, Brandon Newton, is back to receive it. Newton out of Army High School down in Fairfield. Prieto averaging about 33 and a half yards a punt, and now we've got a realignment shall we say of the beavers as the left guys went to the right and the right guys went to the left and the referee said i'm not having any of that he's going to step right in and he's going to call a penalty I, delay of game penalty i thought he said maybe that would be a good thing for the country if the right guys went to the left and the left guys went to the right maybe that's what that was i, I think i like the way you're thinking <laughs> yeah i don't think anybody else does so <laughs> Fourth down, Prieto will punt it from about his 30. Newton waiting at about his 20. A little high snap. Good uh, coverage, uh, good pressure, but he gets it away. And going to get a little bit of a roll now, and more of a roll, go down to about the 10, inside the 10-yard line. So good one by Andres Prieto. Uh, over 45 yards on the punt he puts down. That's his 12th inside the 20 uh, so far this season. And now we'll get to see Dorian Hale, uh, Jordan, and the uh, – Offense from City College of San Francisco. And this has been a very efficient offense this season, averaging 474 yards per game, 300 of which coming through the air. So Dorian Hill, a guy that likes to sling the ball. We saw him do it at De La Salle, and he's been doing it very well for the Rams this season. Yeah, as you mentioned, the six, uh, six interceptions. He's also lost three fumbles, so has nine turnovers on the season. Maybe the only chink in the armor for Dorian Hale. As he's back there, one running back to his right should be Washington. He's going to go ahead and flip it. Running on the right side, and again, bottled up. Tremendous play by one of those fake passes that you just flip it to the, uh, the wide receiver coming through, and he gains about two. And that was a nice little flip to Hassan Machine right there, the receiver out of Sarah High School. So a De La Salle kid to a Sarah kid. Who would have thought that a couple years ago when they're playing against each other in high school? Yeah, Mahassan with 55 catches, 601 yards. That one just about maybe, maybe two yards. That's up a second and eight. Two receivers out to the left for the Rams. Jack Miller, number 16, is at quarterback. Turns around, he hands it off. The right side again bottled up. A couple of yards maybe looking like something that might have been loose down at the bottom of the pile. Ends up about the 14-yard line. Call it the 15. Brings up a third down. Dayton Pearson, the running back there on that. Nice little carry for him, the freshman out of Pittsburgh High School. Another strong football school. And, you know, this is kind of the all-star teams almost of the uh, Sac Joaquin section and the North Coast section, two sections that go head-to-head. -head. And now a lot of these kids going up against each other in what should be a great game here today. Absolutely. So Miller at quarterback, number 16. He is out of uh, San Rafael High School in San Rafael, California, not Dorian Hale. Showing pressure. The Beavers now they get off. And it looks like they got a guy looking to the left, bottled up. Here comes pressure. 
Miller gets away, tries to get forward. I think he probably picked up enough for the first down right about the 20. So the Beavers bottled him up, uh, guarded all the receivers, but uh, Miller gets away and gets himself a first down. It looks like the pressure was started by Shamonte Brown, the freshman D lineman for the Beavers. And credit to Miller there, just kind of stayed patient, didn't get too many happy feet, and found a way to keep that drive alive and keep those chains moving. So Miller at quarterback. Let's see, he is uh, 25 of 54 on this, or 25 of 34 in the season. A couple of touchdowns, no interceptions. So he has seen some action for the Rams this season, and he's back there with one running back to right and trips out to the right side. He's going to gun it to that running back out of the backfield, closed down by the Beavers, spins away, still spinning away, but he's only going to get about a yard or two. So another good pursuit by the Beavers' defense. Yeah, you know what was the interesting thing on that play? Uh, Dietrich's Abinette on uh, – the tackle there, he was hanging on to the undershirt of Washington on that, and it looked like it held him up just enough for his reinforcements to get there. Tyree Washington, 500 yards rushing and uh, 200 yards receiving out of the backfield for the uh, Rams, a sophomore out of St. Mary's in Stockton. Brings up a second down. We're going to call it a second and nine on the 20-yard line. Miller in the shotgun. He's got three to the left. He's going to turn around and hand it off to the running back. Cuts out the right side at the 20, 25. He hit hard at the 25 and brought down for a gain of about five. It'll bring him third and five. And you know, this is the first time we've really seen this Beaver team. They're getting penetration in the backfield, making contact in the backfield, but these running backs are bouncing off, so it's going to be interesting to see how they adjust to that because we haven't really seen them have to deal with that yet this season. Well, it gave him a little bit uh, more than he got. He's actually called down at the 22-yard line, so it'll bring up a third down. Down now and about eight yards to go for the Rams. They picked, or excuse me, uh, yeah, for the Rams. They picked with the first first down on a Miller run. Let's see what happens here at third and eight. Three out to the left side again for the Rams. And now we're going to have a timeout, it looks like, called. Yeah, it looked like Miller was trying to adjust the play at the line of scrimmage and Coach didn't like what he was seeing. Going to talk it over with them a little bit. So let's see. Do we have Kenny Parker down on the side? Can we uh, go down to Kenny? Kenny, are you, he's going to get into position. Uh, and Jordan, before Kenny gets in position, now we've been expecting Dorian Hale the whole time. We saw uh, we have Jack Miller out there. Now, he's, as I said, he's got some, some uh, reps this year, but this is a surprise that we're not seeing Hale. Yeah, a little bit of a surprise, but, hey, you know, Miller's a good build for a quarterback, 6'5", 225. A big boy out there. We saw that he can beat you with his legs. You know, we've seen the arm on the dink and dunk. And, you know, very much, hey, if they're putting him in this position, they wouldn't be putting him here if they don't think he could do it. All right, let's go down. Kenny Parker, you're down on the field. We've played a couple of minutes. Both teams kind of struggling offensively. Yeah, it looks like a defensive struggle so far. Uh, ARC intense down here with the chance and psyching him up, trying to get a stop. They gave up that one first down on a quarterback run, but they did have that play bottled up. So it looks like they're doing basically what they do every game. Yeah, it, it, so far so good. You know, par for the course for them. They've just got to tackle, they're, but they're getting some some penetration just early here in the game. Thanks, Kenny. Third and eight now. Miller in there. The Rams at the 22. Goes back to pass. They can't find anybody. Now he lets it go about the 27. It's caught, but immediately tackled by the Beavers. That'll bring up a fourth down. And that was machine that or Mahasan. Sorry that uh, reeled that one in, but good coverage by the Beavers there. It looked like Tremaine was kind of the one that made the actual tackle there pushing him over and now you're getting a chance with the ball back and a scary punt returner coming out here on robert freeman that's it, right and, and if you're the beavers you got to feel good about the fact that when the uh, miller went back into you know uh passing formation the first time he couldn't find anybody that time he had to get ball rid of it quickly just by that uh, snap is over the head of the punter he runs it back into the end zone he's going to cover it beavers have got a loose ball i believe let's see the signal that's going to be a touchdown for the beavers and that's exactly what you want if you're arc slade wilson the Folsom grad falling on in the end zone. We've seen the Beavers winning this field position battle all season long, forcing teams to punt out of the end zone, and that's a benefit of that right there. What turns into, you know, potentially good field position on the 50 ends up being seven points for AR. Yes, and we've got, uh, see, Bahash. Basharapur, who is the punter, did the right thing on that, Jordan. He tried to just fall on the ball, give up the two points, but he couldn't corral it, and then it squirted out, and as you say, Wilson jumps on it, and that's the kind of thing, as Kenny Parker's been saying all season, that defense just, uh, you know, special teams obviously a part of defense in this situation, and they capitalize it, and let's see Logan McCreary come out now and try to make it 7 to nothing in favor of the Beavers, 7.30 to go here in this first quarter, so Exactly halfway through the quarter, Jordan, and we see the first points, and it's on a special teams. Yeah, and how about the 
American River punt return or punt defense on that, falling on the punter there to try to jar him off the ball, and they did exactly yeah, that absolutely. to open up for that touchdown seven points instead of two. Kick is good. That makes it seven to nothing in favor of the Beavers. So not the way we thought the first uh, touchdown would come in this game, and we're going to try to do a little bit more investigation if we can get Kenny Parker. We'll move him around, see if he can find out why we don't have the quarterback for the Rams that, that we thought we were going to have, but not the way that we thought we'd see the first point scored in this one. No, and in a game that points are going to come at a premium, that was a huge Huge stop there for the Beavers. Huge way to get points on the board because, like we said, I'm expecting with these defenses, even though they're high-powered offense, to be a low-scoring game. So if you can steal seven on special teams or on defense, that's going to put you in front of the eight ball a lot. Now, remember, early, early in the season, uh, you know, the offense hadn't quite hit their stride yet. It was the defense that really set the tone in the first two or three games for the Beavers, and then the offense has caught up recently, and obviously that's uh, what you want to have with the well-rounded team offensive and defensive, but the defense has been something that is, you know, from game one, play one, they've been there, and uh, Coach O has been real proud of his defense, and uh, he's uh, very happy to have this 7 nothing lead. Didn't look like it offensively. They had the one drive that ended up in a punt, but uh, the punt not executed correctly by the Rams and the Beavers lead it seven to nothing. Winner this for a reminder place in the NorCal final game, which will be next weekend at either the San Mateo uh, Bulldogs or whoever wins this game, depending on what happens in the San Mateo game. They're taking on Modesto right now. So here's Andres Prieto. He'll be doing the kicking. See if we have uh, looks like we've got Washington and Henderson deep to so return. So number 22, uh, Jalen Henderson, and number uh, seven, Terry Washington. There's the kick all the way down into the end zone. It's another touchback, and that's almost out of the end zone, another touchback uh, for the American River College Beavers. So coming out will be the Rams here, first and 10 on the 20-yard line. And if you're AR, you're feeling about as good as possible as you can, all three phases you know offense was able to move the ball well the drive stalled a little bit but hey nothing's going to come easy in the playoff game defense plays well and special teams get you the points quickly before this first play arc alumni association crab feed comes up february 3rd from 5 to 9 benefits the arc athletic program at arcbeavers.com for your tickets and for your information it's a big event it really helps out a lot so check it out. So here's Miller again. He's in the shotgun. He's got nobody back there with him. Three and now four to the right. He's going to throw it quickly out to the right. He gets the completion. But the Beavers might have been there quicker than the receiver, Jordan. And they did drop him. I think he probably lost a yard. Yeah, it looks like that was a screen pass that the blockers didn't quite get there before the defense did. And I think leading the charge on that for AR was number 91, Garrett Risley, a Jesuit grad, 6'3", 235, so a big freshman down there on the D-line for the Beavers. Yeah, one of the guys that uh, Coach wanted us to mention in this game as far as uh, uh, Cole Gustafson and Malik uh, Malachi Red also in there, and uh, uh, number 59, uh, Diallo Washington, a couple of the standouts for the defense so far. Second down, going to be 11 yards to go. Back to pass again. Got a little bit of time. Now it's going to close down. And Miller gets away again. Goes to his right. Throws. He's got a man at the 38. He's going to have it. And out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. Rolling that in. Number 82, Darius Bedford with the catch there. And just a good heads-up play by Miller. We've seen him now use his feet to escape the pressure. He's calm and cool with the Beavers coming at him. Looks like we've got a flag down on the play, though, Jordan. The uh, signal to me was the fact that nobody was going up to where the ball was. So it's going to be third and 11. So it was called incomplete, the call on the field. So it's third down and 11 yards to go from the 24-yard line. Miller in the shotgun. Three spread out to the left. He looks to the right right away. Here comes the pressure, and they're going to get him this time as the Beavers, three or four of them, Jordan, they've had three guys in there, and they haven't been able to put hands on them, and that time they all got him at about the 19-yard line. And it looks like it was Washington that provided the initial pressure, a name we've called all year, and then Malachi Red and Cole Gustafson came in and combined for the sack. A couple names we're very familiar with if you've been watching the Beavers all season. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to get a punt here, and then after this punt, we'll go down to Kenny Parker on the sidelines and I uh, uh, want to see what he says about it. You know, he loves the defense, and whenever they have a good series, we have to come and talk to him. There's the punt coming up. It's a short one out to about the 50-yard line, caught at the 48, trying to get some space, and he's got some coming out to the right side. What a play. Gets away from one, tries to get away from another, but he is down. So 
It was looking to make something happen, Jordan. I thought there was a, a, a lane out to the right side, one defender for the Rams, cut down Freeman, and that's going to make it at the 47-yard line. Yeah, and the way Freeman moved on that play, I think I pulled something just yes. watching that. Yeah. I didn't know the human body could go that way and just pop up like nothing happened. All right, so before we have first down and 10 on the 48-yard line of the Rams, Kenny Parker, what he got from us on the sideline? Must be kind of excited down there. Oh, it's great. It's fantastic. I All I hear, all I'm hearing is screams of joy as they <laughs> penetrate through the line and swarm to the football. Their, their tackling is really coming around here, and they're making plays. All right, Kenny Parker on the sidelines, the prime benefactor, prime uh, uh, supporter of the defense for the Beavers, and Kenny Leith is in the shotgun, first and 10 on the 48. He's got one running back behind him. He's going to fake. He's looking deep on the right side. Now he's a crossing pattern, but he throws it behind, I think, that Seth Bossley, who was coming across from the left side to the right, thrown behind him, and it's incomplete. Yeah, and Elias Williams in the coverage there. He was really just on him like a blanket. Not really a lot of open throws downfield so far for the Beavers. We'll see how they kind of attack this because you know San Francisco is expecting the run with this backfield. So we'll see how they're going to get lead going in this one. We thought I thought there might be a chance to uh, throw the fly pattern down the sideline there, but he decided to go across the middle. And I think if he'd have led Seth Bothley, it might have been a completion. Second down now, 546 to go. First quarter, Beavers lead 7 to nothing. Leith turns around. He's going to hand it up the middle. he got room again, cutting to the outside of the 40, and he's down, knocked down. Nice defensive play by the Rams. Almost Jacobs breaking that one, but it's an eight-yard game, third and two. And how about the running room this offensive line is giving for Jacobs? He's had holes to run through all day. I mean, you know, anyone would be running positive yards with the holes these guys are opening up right now. It did, and for the second time in this uh, last three or four plays, a great defensive play by the Rams really saved them a lot of yards because Jacobs was cutting that one to the outside, and it looked like he had a lot of uh, green grass or turf ahead of him. Sets up a 30 and 2. We're on the 40-yard line. Tight formation for the Beavers. 5.06 to go first quarter. Turn around a straight handoff. Trying to get to the outside. Riley, and he's got nothing but green grass. He is going to go all the way for the touchdown. Are there any flags? There are not. Beavers put up six more on a touchdown run. And how about the big man, Casey Riley, showing off his burners? What are we going to time that 40 out? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Woo! Hey, the, for a minibus, that's pretty good. I'll tell you that right now. I'll say that 0-60 to 60 and 3.5. Casey Riley with the house call to put the Beavers up two scores. And great job again by the offensive line as uh, Riley looked ahead of him and made the, the call to go outside, and the lineman occupied the Rams and makes it 13 to nothing. Here's Logan McCreary again at 4.55 to go here in the first quarter. Beavers looking to go up 14 to nothing. Ball's down, and the kick is up, and it is good. So the Beavers with the quick strike there on the third down and two, a 40-yard run by Casey Riley. And, uh, Jordan, when you look at Casey Riley, 53 carries, 352 yards, nine touchdowns. That's ten rushing touchdowns for Casey Riley, who probably gets the third most carries maybe uh, in the backfield. So that's a tremendously productive ball player. He is a Jerome Bettis of this team. You know, he's getting the ball in these short yardage situations. He's getting the ball at the goal line. You know, these three, two, one to go situations. Yeah. I definitely don't think that play was drawn up to be a 40 yard carry for him, but I think Coach O is going to take that when you're running back that's your power guy gets the open field like that can turn on the burners and take it to the house well you talk about turning the burners and it's almost like being a little bit cynical on that but really at 510 and 245 i would like to know how fast it took him to go those 40 yards in full football gear because he was moving and i think the fact that he saw nobody in front of him made him go a little bit faster if that's possible so two touchdowns on the board very quickly for the beavers with just under five to go here in the first quarter mark the panel here with you jordan georgeson to my right, Kenny Parker down on the sidelines, and of course the great Stones McCoy behind the glass. Got to mention that he likes to, you know, he's flashing that Stones McCoy. I, I usually call it million dollar smile. I'll call it a fifty thousand dollar smile, flashing it to any and all he can find. Here's uh, Andres Prieto trying to put in a, obviously Jordan a big offensive uh, series right here for City College of San Francisco. Prieto another beautiful kick, and that's going to go over the head of the receiver or the returner. And on to the track here at American River College. So we look at it's the uh, third time they'll have the ball. Jack Miller is their quarterback. He's the only quarterback we've seen so far. He's uh, 
had some time to throw for the first couple of series, and then finally the Beavers got to him. And Jordan, you have to figure the fact that he got swarmed the last time he went back to pass is going to kind of be on his mind a little bit. Yeah, right now for Miller, the biggest thing is leading this team down the field in some way. You've got to find a way to get points here. You don't want to be down in a two-score hole this early against right. a team like American River that we've seen how momentum affects him. One back behind him. He's going to take the handoff. The scat out to the outside, but he is caught and thrown to the ground at about the 20-yard line. That Let's was, see if they give him a three- or four-yard loss on the play. That was Pearson on the carry, and Tremaine, it looked like, coming in with the big hit. And Tyler Tremaine, a big player that we have seen this year. Sorry, Josh Tremaine, right. 6'1", 225. Doesn't really fit the part of, you would think, the linebacker that – has the stats that he does, but he's really been the catalyst for this defense for the Beavers. Absolutely incredible play. And Dayton uh, Pearson at 5'9 and 160 out of Pittsburgh High in Pittsburgh, California. So Miller back to pass, looks to his right, and he's going to get away. He's got time. He has a guy over the middle, but the ball goes through his hands at about the 36 and incomplete, just a little bit behind the the receiver from Jack Miller, and it'll bring up a third down. And, and Jordan, what we're hearing from the side is that Dorian Hale is injured, and that's why we are not seeing him in this game. So obviously a terrible break for the Rams. Definitely a tough break for them, and Miller's the guy that they're turning to, and you know he's done a good job trying to lead this offense with the pressure, but American River just swarming them right now defensively. Let's see what they bring here on the third down. Obvious passing situation, third and about 12 from the 23. Got to get to the 35, and Miller has three wide receivers to the left. He's got two flanked to the right. He's throwing a couple of quick ones to the outside. Let's see if he tries to get rid of this one. And I think we're going to get a false start here. And the Beavers, the, the one thing you don't want to do, and we'll talk with Kenny uh, in a couple minutes about this, Jordan, you don't want to give this Beavers defense a little bit of momentum because they love to go downhill on you. They do, and right now, I mean, through this point in the game, City College has ran 12 plays for negative 16 yards. You can't be giving them free plays, and like we said, this defense has a snowball effect about them. Absolutely. 4.09 to go first quarter. 14 nothing Beavers. Three to the left, two to the right for Miller. Beavers showing a little bit of pressure up the middle as it is a third down and about 12 yards to go here, and Miller goes back. He's got some time. Now he's under pressure, gets away from one. He's going to send one long down the middle of the field, and it is intercepted by the Beavers. I think we're going to have a penalty, though. Uh, we'll see what that call is. And I didn't see any contact between the receiver, but two uh, defensive backs, and now we're going to have a, pro a call against the Beavers as the uh, referee was looking straight at one of the Beavers running off the field and threw the flag up in the air. So he probably said something. Let's see what the calls are. I think one of them is going to be a pass interference. It looked like his receiver was trying to work his way back to the ball. Matulich was in the way. Now, I don't know if the head was turned necessarily, so I don't want to say if I agree or disagree, but this is definitely going to be an unsportsmanlike after the play on ARC. Absolutely. I'm sure something was said after they thought they had got possession of it, but as you say, that's the only thing I think it could be in the situation throwing the flag, and it's unfortunate because there was no way anybody was going to catch that ball except for one of the Beavers. And, uh, you know, you don't want to give a team life that's really struggling to try to get going. And uh, that could have been a big turnover. Well, we'll see what the call is. is there's a lot of conversation. It is. A so you make the call there, Matulich. So we're going to probably get about, I would say, 25 or 30 yards in penalties here in a first down for the City College San Francisco Rams. It looks like they deemed Antonio Williams for the unsportsmanlike. So 30 yards of penalties right here. And like you say, you don't want to give signs of life. You know, we saw it in the high school championships yesterday, right. a penalty giving a team a new sign of life that helped them win the game. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give the Rams a reason to start believing, and you want to be able to put the nail in the coffin rather than keep the door cracked and let them back into this game. Right, and you were going to have a 60-yard uh, field to try to uh – to try to go to if you were the the Beavers with the ball in your own 40. But here we go. First down, 47-yard line of the Rams. Make it the 48. Now we got a bunch of whistles, and we're going to have a timeout by the Beavers. I think we'll take a timeout as well here as we are four minutes left here in the first quarter. Our score, American River College 14, City College of San Francisco nothing. You're watching ARC Football presented by the Stones Radio Networks. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Placer County's best kept secret is back for another exciting summer at historic McBean Stadium. 33 action-packed home games loaded with fun for the whole family. Local beer, wine, and eats. Fireworks, giveaways, theme nights, kid zone, and more. Come join in the fun and enjoy small town baseball with Major League Entertainment. 
Tickets on sale now at LincolnPotters.com. Lincoln Potters Baseball. Come on out and join in the fun. Oh, I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed the job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part is about eating it. Back out to Beaver Stadium. First down, turn around a handoff. And again, what a defensive penetration by the Beavers and knocking the running back down. I think that was Terry Washington, the running back, and Jordan, he was knocked down for a loss of about four yards. And Matula laying the lumber there. Talk about making up for the penalty right there. Maybe it wasn't a 15-yarder, but that's how you get the momentum right back on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, and we were talking about it. A really smart timeout by Coach O down there to get his team and said, look, we've got everything going our way. The only thing that's in our way is you. And quit doing that, basically, I'm sure is what he said. And, and Matulich went out there and said, okay, coach, uh, let's do it this way. Second down, and now make it 15 yards to go from the 43, 44-yard line of the Rams. Miller turns, he hands it off right up the middle and swarming again that Beavers defensive front. And we're going to have a third down, and again, a couple of players in the backfield wrestling each other to the turf, but no call on that one. Third down, about 12, Jordan, coming up. Another one involved with a little wrestle, Matuich there, but this defensive line really swarming to the ball. And another third and long situation for the Rams. I mean, this has got to be something that's getting old right now if you're their offensive coordinator. Let's see if the Beavers try to bring some pressure here as they did last time to force that interception before the penalty. Third down at the 46-yard line. Quickly back to pass is Miller. He's got a little bit of protection. Can't find anybody. Now breaking free defensively, and the Beavers get hands on him. He guides to get away, and he's going to be dragged down right about the 44-yard line. Another great penetration by the Beavers' defensive line. And Jordan, they keep getting hands on him. He keeps getting away, but that time they dropped him. And how about Diallo Washington on that? He battled through getting held. Quarterback slips away from him, and he still finds a way to get the sack as we have a Ram down on the field. Can't tell what number that is. As we mentioned, uh, Jack Miller getting away. I mean, six foot five, two hundred twenty-five pounds. He's not an easy guy to bring down. And the Beavers are going with strength and numbers. There's one guy not able to get him, and they've got a couple of guys. And he almost got out of that one as well. But that is going to bring up the punt. This time, the punt will be from about the thirty-yard line rather than where it would have been from before. But still, the Beavers kind of responding to Coach O calling that timeout and kind of showing a little bit of maturity there. Yeah, it was a great timeout right there. Like we said, we talked about, felt like a regroup and reset timeout. And I love the way the Beavers were attacking this game defensively, knowing that they don't have Dorian Hell. I mean, you know, Miller's coming in there and he's doing well with what's being thrown at him. But the Beavers are just saying, hey, you know, a guy who hasn't seen a ton of game action this year, let's just try to overwhelm him right away and kind of get him playing behind the sticks a little bit, and they've done a good job of that so That's far. a great point, Jordan, because you want to take a guy who hasn't seen this much ball. You want to take a guy, and you want to make sure his first his first uh, option is not there. So we're going to go for it. They're going for it. No, it's a short punt, and it hits at the 34. So it was kind of a short formation for the punt. Got the punt away, but uh, really feel like they would have been better served going the regulation route. Yeah, it was interesting. I'm wondering if they were trying to maybe catch AR a little off guard, maybe try to get him to burn a timeout, or maybe see if they got a look that they could take a stab. And actually a pretty decent punt there by Miller on that. But now AR has a chance to really – really put the hammer down on this game. About a 25-yard punt. Well, I was saying about uh, Miller, you, you get a guy who doesn't get that many looks back there, and you make sure his first option is shut down, and that's what they've done so far. And he's not, you know, he's not as, as game as, as game tested, so he's not able to pick up a second or perhaps a third option. So the Beavers coming out, first down on their 31-yard line. Leith in the shotgun. Showing pressure, Leaf back to pass. He's got time, gets it through. There's a slant play at about the 40, caught in a great tackle on Robert Freeman, but Freeman's going to pick up 12 yards and a first down. And Henderson with a good hit and a very well-timed hit because you don't want to give Freeman a lot of time to move in the open field, but it looks like this one's coming back with a flag in the backfield. Oh, there you go. So uh, not so successful. I was going to say Kenny Leaf did a real good job of bringing that one. Uh, now we're going to get offside on the Rams. That will be declined by the Beavers, so... 
and he's going to be a first down. Kenny Lee's kind of climbing that pocket. He went back and kind of stepped up in the pocket and found Freeman on a little bit of a delayed slant play and made the probably Kenny's best throw of the day. He's had a couple that have been behind his receivers, pick up the first down. So far, it's been the run game, I think, Jordan, of the Beavers that has been more impressive with Avanti Jacobs and also Casey Riley with the big touchdown run to make it 14 to nothing. We're under two minutes to go here in this first quarter. Jacobs behind Leith in the backfield. Kenny's going to turn around. He's going to hand it to Jacobs. He's got a little bit of room, 50-47. Call it the 47-yard line gain of about 10. Again, Jacobs getting room to run and making uh, making hay with that. Yeah, it looked like that might have even been a little bit of a read option. Leith makes the right read. Jacobs with room, and it was very downhill running his offensive line. We're already three, four yards down the field with the lineman by the time Jacobs got that ball. So second down, one yard to go here. Nine for Jacobs on that. He's had a couple of big runs in this game already. Coming down to 110 to go in the first quarter. 14 to nothing for the Beavers. Leith now with the second one can do a couple of different things. Let's see if he's going to go ahead and go to the air. He's going to send it down the sideline. Left side going up in the air. High. That's Stevenson, I believe, over there. And it was a little bit too high for him to bring up a third down. It's tough to overthrow a guy like Stevenson who's standing in there at 6'4", but just a little bit high. I like the idea, though, the one-on-one -on -one matchup on the sideline. Try to get a big chunk play right there. Yeah, we saw that earlier on, on this side of the field. That they chose not to go in and take a chance, but I know they feel that they can get a yard running the ball anytime they want to, so why not go ahead and take that chance, bring up the third down and one at about the 48-yard line. Tight formation for the Beavers. This is the one that Riley went out went for the big run. It's going to be lethal all the way, and they're going to do a little push on him. I don't know. I think he probably got it. Let's see where it's marked. It looks like from where the referees are approaching it, Jordan, we're going to get a first down Beavers. It looks like it. we did have a flag that was thrown right when the ball was snapped, so we'll see if this is a, maybe an illegal formation or, or maybe player lined up in the neutral zone, something yeah, like that. absolutely. Let's take a look down there. It's going to be a false start on the Beavers, and so that's going to bring up uh, on a play that, you know, you, you figure if you run that – if you run that well, you're going to make a first down every time, and they, they couldn't get it together as far as the uh, mechanics of the situation, so it'll bring it back five. Now it's going to go back to about the 45-yard line. Well, I mean, it's, now the referee says, well, hey, let me think about that for a second. I think I'll go back to the 48. And still a third and six, the way the Beavers have ran the ball. You still probably feel pretty confident either putting the ball in the air or on the ground in this one. We haven't seen the Beavers try to throw the ball anybody out of their backfield uh, so far in this one. 45 seconds to go, first quarter. Single back behind Kenny Leith, third and six. And now here goes the back outside. And Leith has got a guy over the middle, and nobody really, I don't know if he was looking back at that when the ball was thrown a little bit short. He had one guy with a crossing route and one guy going deep and kind of threw it between the two. Yeah, it looked like I think the intended receiver was going to be number 85 there, Zoltan Holmey, the uh, – the Alaskan tight end there yeah, for the, tight end, sure. the Beavers, but I don't know. Maybe there was a miscommunication. It looked like he threw a dart when it should have been a lob, so we'll see. There was uh, something on that play that wasn't quite clicking, but as we've seen Leith all year, I'm sure they will get it right very quickly. Yeah, the one thing that really isn't clicking is the Beavers throwing the ball so far. Fourth down, they're going to go for it here at their own 48-yard line. No, it's going to be a punt. They're going to do the same thing that uh, the Rams did, and that one is a beautiful punt. Let's see if the Beavers can cover it before it gets in the end zone. I believe they did. What a play. Is that Robert Freeman getting down there? And so Leith went to the short formation. He punted it beautifully, and Freeman downs it into two. Is there no end to what the electrifying Robert Freeman can do? We always talk about the plays this kid can make and special teams on the offensive side, but right there forcing a team that has struggled to move the ball to now go yeah. 98 yards. I mean, that's the type of play right there that's a hustle play, and that's the reason why this kid is getting looks from a lot of Division One schools around the country right we, now. We haven't seen two punts from that formation all season, and we've seen two punts from that formation basically in the first quarter here, and Kenny Leith pulled it off perfectly uh, with probably a, uh, let's see, I'm going to call that 50-yard uh, net on that one and downed at about the two-yard line. Make it the one-yard line. So Miller's going to have to work from his own end zone. He's got one back with him. See if he tries to get himself some room. Beaver's showing some pressure up there, moving around on the defensive line. 
Miller's going to throw it right away out of the backfield. He's got a little bit of room, cuts it up to the 10 and all the way up to about the 14, 15 yard line. A good play by the uh, Rams getting themselves a first down as the first quarter is winding down. And that was Mahassan right there getting it. And just a good little chunk play right there to get your back off against the wall and just kind of give yourself a little bit of breathing room and what right. you needed right there for essentially your biggest play of the game so far. Going to be the end of the first quarter as the time runs out. And so the uh, Rams with a positive play, but it's been mostly Beavers here in the first quarter. We end the first quarter with a score. American River College 14, City College of San Francisco nothing. You're watching ARC Football presented by the Stones Radio Networks. Oh, I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, the most rewarding part is about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Welcome back to Beaver Stadium. Second quarter of the semifinal game between City College of San Francisco and America River College Beavers. Mark the Phantom Low here with you. It's Jordan Georgeson to my right. Kenny Parker down on the sidelines. And Stones McCoy behind the glass bringing this one to you. First down for the Rams. The ball at their own, let's call it 16-yard line. Oh, make us call it 15-yard line since that's where it is. Miller with the completion to Mahassan for the first down. Motion. Motion for the uh, Rams and it reset. And Miller again, not the regular starting quarterback. He's going to hand that one off. No, he's going to hold on to it and come around the right side. And nice defensive play. Good idea by Miller as he saw it was getting closed down as a uh, running back. He held on to it and made about six yards, Jordan. And Michael Chavez with the good close there because Miller had a lot of room to run. He's really shown off his legs and been impressive in the running game so far. So, AR, we're going to have to see how they're going to continue to combat that this game, especially as San Francisco tries some different things to get this offense going. Yeah, Miller has run out of necessity, but that's the first time he decided to run it on his own, and he made a good a gain of about five. So it'll be second and five at the 20. One running back. And it's going to be a pitch out to the left side. A lot of penetration and no gain. In fact, we're going to lose back to the original line of scrimmage. And Jordan, the penetration for the defensive line and linebackers. The Beavers have been good all year, but I don't know if it's been this good. And Phantom, stop me if you've heard this before, but Josh Tremaine right there, the one <laughs> yeah. leading the penetration on that. I think we just need a Staples easy button that just says Josh Tremaine tackle for loss right now because he has just been on fire this season. Great read on that. And again, another third down and long situation for San Francisco. Yeah, third and ten. And, uh, you know, the Beavers uh, have shut them down in this situation before but made mistakes. So let's see if they can play this one clean. Third down, uh, trips to the right. Miller has done some uh, quick tosses so far in this one. He completed over 70% of the passes. And he, does a, he fakes the quick toss, comes back to the left side on a wide receiver. Kind of a screen, but it's going to be shut down for a gain of maybe about four or five yards. A good misdirection for the Rams, but uh, just not enough room there. Yeah, just another situation where I think uh, AR's done a little bit of their homework on this defensively, too. Felt like they saw that play coming from a mile away, and they jumped on it right away. And this is, That's one of the situations, Jordan, where you get a, a team that doesn't have their starting – they have a starting quarterback in. They just have so much more they can choose from offensively as far as a, a game plan situation is. And in this case, they got to kind of keep it a little bit more simple for a guy who doesn't get as many uh, reps as your starter. So a punt formation again. That is Basharapur. 
who lets that one go, and that's a shank down the right side, and it's going to go out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. So a very poor punt by a guy who averages 33 and a half uh, yards a punt and a great field position for the Beavers. And, you know, Jordan, you feel like the Beavers really, you want to go out there, you want to go ahead and uh, and put, push this one in because you think really a definitive, a two-touchdown a two advantage is great, but you go up three touchdowns early in the second quarter with the way your defense is playing. Yeah, especially in the way that this team, the San Francisco team, is kind of making some mistakes right now. You can't keep just not cap- capitalizing on these mistakes. You've got to find a way to punch this one in, make this a three-score game, and really make them pay for the errors. Right. So Leith is uh, in a quarterback. Jacobs has uh, played behind him. Riley's played behind him. We saw Joshua Moore, I think, for one or two plays. I don't think we've seen Torrey Hendrick yet. There's motion from the left to the right for the Beavers. Lee turns around, hands it straight up the middle, cutting, trying to find some room, pushing forward for about two or three yards for the Beavers, bring up a second and seven. That was one of the first times where we've seen the Rams plug up the running lanes, but still the push from this offensive line able to turn it into a positive gain. So something you got to be happy with if you're the Beavers. Yeah, Jacobs and Riley both in the game as they've got Jacobs spread out to the right and Riley to the right of Kenny Leith. Everybody going to the wide side for the Beavers. Second down and about eight yards to go. Hand off to uh, Riley trying to find the middle, but well plugged, as you said, uh, Jordan, by the Rams, and they're going to stop him for probably no gain and bring up a third down and eight. And good adjustment here by this San Francisco defense. I think that was Simeon Mitchell that was leading the charge there. The six foot three sophomore D lineman out of McClemens High School in Oakland, a powerhouse down there in the Bay Area. Yeah, leads the team code, leads the team in sacks, and leads the team in tackles for loss with 13 on the season and made a fine play there. So it brings up a third and eight. As we talked about, Jordan, you want to capitalize on these situations, these advantage situations when you have them. And the B was probably going to have to put it in the air to get this first down, third down and eight with Jacobs to the right of Leith in the shotgun. He's going to hand that one out. No, he holds on to it. He rolls to his right. He finds the receiver dropped at about the 29-yard line, bring up a fourth down. Yeah, and that one looked like it was a little bit behind Holmey, but again, when you got a reel in, that's one that they're going to want back. And how about the pressure there by San Francisco? It looked like that was number 15 zone Warenga that was bringing the pressure on it. Kind of made Leaf make that decision a little quicker, I think, than he wanted to with that play developing. Yeah, Warenga has uh, five sacks, 11 and a half tackles for a loss. But again, kind of a recurring theme with Kenny today, uh, Jordan, where you've seen him be so precise all season. That's about the third or fourth throw he's thrown that's been behind the receiver and maybe as you talk about the pressure has something to do with it so we're going to get a timeout for the beavers i think we'll take the timeout and uh go down on the sidelines kenny parker's been manning it down there he's seen a lot of action kenny what's going on down there yeah you know the defense is playing out of their minds which is one of the keys we talked about before the game and you know as per usual, the teams responded well to adversity. They got that penalty, came back right back with the tackle for loss after the coaches got you know, got them on the sideline and coached them up. The offense is struggling a little bit here, passing the football, and they're going to need to pick it up. Hey, Kenny, uh, you're down on the field. Um, you can see a little bit better. It seems like Kenny Leith, a couple of passes, he's thrown three or four of them. He's thrown a bit behind the receivers. Is that the way you're seeing it down there? Yeah. You know, at times I'm, I'm like, who is this guy? Is not recognizable as Kenny Leith. He's not been accurate today, and it's not something I've seen before this season. A, a lot of throws are, are behind the receivers a little bit. I don't know if the pressure's bothering him or, or if he's just having an off day. All right. Thanks, Kenny. Kenny Parker down the sidelines. And, Jordan, it's what we've talked about, though, all season is uh, Kenny's maturity, not Kenny Leith, not Kenny Parker. Kenny's maturity has been one of the things that's impressed us about him as a quarterback this season. And let's see if he uh, brings that to bear here. Fourth down. Ball at the 33-yard line. Got to get to the 25. Got receivers out to the right and motion to the left. Leith has time. Takes his time. Tries to hit a slant. He's got Freeman. Freeman kicks away to the outside, to the right side, to the 10. He gets down to the five, and he is knocked out of bounds. A big play by the Beavers. No surprise, it's Robert Freeman. And that's exactly what you need to kickstart your quarterback, get him back in his groove. Find a guy like Robert Freeman, get that quick strike, and if you hit Freeman in stride, he's going to make you pay. And now keep an eye on Micaiah Stevenson coming in, one of the favorite red zone targets for the Beavers in an offense that's converting 88% in the red zone this yeah, season. We've seen Stevenson a couple times when he's getting split out wide to one side or another, and he has the whole field to work with. He is tough. But Freeman, Kenny Leith gets the protection that Kenny Parker was talking about, and Kenny surveyed the field and found Freeman 
and it's a first down inside the 10-yard line. First and goal for the Beavers. And off straight up the middle. A little bit of room in the five. Gets it out and gets to the four. And Casey Riley continues his block for another five yards. But a good play by the Rams defensive line who stepped up lately and is going to set up a second down. Yeah, and I wonder how much of this, too, was setting up for maybe a jump ball in the end zone over in the corner here at Stevenson. So it's not as far of a throw when you're on the opposite hash. Freeman comes in. He is with Stevenson out there. Riley, who's always around when the end zone is near. And Avanti Jacobs as well. Leith looks over to the sidelines. The Beavers in a very left-leaning formation there with Stevenson and Freeman Boslaw left. In the shotgun, Leith turns around. Makes it out. He's gonna, he still has it. Let's it fly for the corner of the end zone. He throws the ball away into the inflatable helmet over on the right. So that was a play, Jordan. It looked like it just didn't turn out, didn't materialize the way the Beavers thought. Yeah, it looked like Stevenson was coming in on a crossing route, but was just well covered. You know, Riley was kind of in, in the flat there, but again, well covered. And smart play by Leith, I think, to just, you know, take the loss and still keep yourself in a position where you can score on this instead of facing a third and goal from the 11 or 12 yard line yeah curious to see how the beavers play this as far as if they get inside the five on this play do they go ahead and go for it they bring out mccreary who's been excellent on field goals all season long but right now it's third down goal to goal ball right around the five yard line leith is in that shotgun he's gonna he's gonna hold it. he's got it back he's got a guy coming out of the backfield that's a touchdown of Ant jacob for the beavers and a rare pass catching opportunity for jacobs we don't really see him reel in a ton but Good play right there. He almost snuck under the defensive line, hit behind his offensive line, and wide open in there for six. Yeah, he has nine catches, 102 yards, and a touchdown coming in. And we talked about it a little bit earlier, time about throwing to the guys out of the backfield. That time uh, it was uh, maybe the wide receivers of the Beavers occupying the Rams' defensive backs, and they kind of forgot, everybody forgot, about Ivan Jacobs who comes out of the backfield for the big touchdown. So a touchdown pass for Kenny Leith. He kind of found his touch on that drive a little bit with 9.35 to go. Logan McCreary. Coming back in, trying to make this a 21-point lead for the Beavers here at Beaver Stadium. Logan comes through, lets it fly, and it is good. There are so, three flags down there on the field. All three refs threw them in sync, too, which you rarely see. You rarely see, but I was <laughs> quite impressive. A very impressive display, perhaps, it's an offside kind of situation, and I think if three reps throw it, even if, if you decline one of them, you should be able to take the other two. I, I like that. I think every flag should be, or it's what if we do like point flags? You know, there's a five-yard flag, a 10-yard, and a 15-yard I flag. love that. I think that you are really, you know, if football wasn't already the most popular sport, you would make it that way with your innovations, Jordan Georgeson. 21 to nothing here with 9.35 to go in the half, and the Beavers, and the Beavers, uh, come in here and do what we said they had to do, which is take advantage of the situation and come out. And they needed the big play to Freeman to keep it going, but then uh, they, they uh, capitalized on the throw to Jacobs to make it 21-0. Yeah, the Beavers came in here to establish the run very early, and, you know, they made it apparent right now that we're going to try to bully you the way down the field, and so far they've done exactly that through the first two and, or quarter and a half, I guess we'll say, of this one. Good time to remind you about the ARC Alumni Association Crab Feed coming up on February the 3rd, right around the corner from 5 to 9. It benefits ARC Athletics. ARCBeavers.com is the place you go for tickets and for information. So Prieto, who's had a couple of touchbacks on kickoff so far today, he's going to try to do it again. Two receivers or returners back for the uh, for the Rams here, who they're trying just trying to get something going here without their quarterback Dorian Hale. Jack Miller has come in; he's taken over the six foot five uh, sophomore out of uh, San Rafael. But so far, the Beavers' defense has made it very difficult. That kick is ballooning a little bit. It's going to be taken at the one yard line by the Rams. Coming up the right hash mark, goes over to the left side, found a little bit of room, cutting it back. And out at about the 25-yard line, a pretty good return for the Rams to set up first down. Yeah, good job there to kind of put yourself in a position. You know, the Rams have started so many of these drives stuck inside their own 15-yard line. So it's got to feel good to have some breathing room from the start. And we'll see what they draw up for Miller here. So Miller coming out. He's down now 21 to nothing. It's, I know it's... It's a big lead, but you have to be important. It's important that he not panic or the, the Rams as an offense not panic and try to, you know, come out here and pull big play out of big play. 
but they've got to get something going. They've got three out to the right. One running back to the left of uh, Jack Miller. He's looking to the right. He kicks it out quickly. It's completed at the 25 up to the 30. Two defenders for the Beavers knocking out of bounds. It's a gain of about five. Bring up a second and five. And that was Mahasin right there who's really been a big part of this passing game. And, you know, as you said, Phantom, yes, it's 21 nothing right now. But even if Miller is not the normal signal caller here, this is still an offense that's averaging over 400 right. yards a game and 43.7 points per game. So an offense that you're not going to take lightly because it's not all Dorian Hill that's been doing that. There's a lot of weapons on this team. For Absolutely, but I would submit that that has not been against a defense like the American River College Beavers. And we have we might have an injury on the sideline there. I don't like know if Matulich. it's Matulich. Okay, Robert Matulich is limping off. He's... You can tell it's him because two guys tried to help him and he shoved him away and just is limping over. And we'll get a, a report as soon as possible on Robert from uh, Kenny Parker on the sidelines, but a big loss for the Beavers as he comes hobbling off. Second down, about five yards to go. I think we're going to have an offsides on the Beavers. It's a free play for Miller. He throws it to the sidelines, a completion at about the 42, which would be a first down. Let's see, I think they'll probably take the play, and I do believe the Beavers jumped off sides. Let's get the call from our re referee down there. It'll be right at the 40-yard line if the play is accepted and is off sides on American River College. And a first down. So Miller with a little bit of success there. Jordan, you know, every, every little bit helps as far as, uh, you know, the Rams trying to get something started. And that was Cam Johnson that reeled that one in. Freshman out of Menlo Atherton. Six foot three, a big part of a very good receiving core with that team last yeah, season. Yeah, 21 catches coming in. There's a run down the right side, and again, the Beavers penetrating defensively. The run game, and we talked about this. Looks like there might be a flag on the middle of the field. We talked about this, Jordan, last game against San Mateo. The uh, Rams only ran for 27 yards, and that was one of the reasons for their downfall. This time, the Beavers again getting through into the backfield to drop in. Let's see if there's a call on the field. Looks like it was red that. Led the I think charge we're going to get a, we're going to get a holding call. Excuse me, Jordan, and that is probably going to be declined because the result of the play was a loss of about three yards to bring up a second and thirteen. Yeah, American River again getting great penetration. Red led the way there, and hey, why not? I'd take the second and thirteen over a first and fifteen any day. Yeah, Red and Risley, Gustafson, all uh, doing great work in, out there for uh, Dalla Washington as well for. The Beavers brings up a second down, about 13 yards to go. They've got to get to midfield, do the Rams. Coming down to eight minutes to go in the first half. Three wide receivers to the right for Jack Miller. He's got a running back next to him. He's gonna, we're going to have a whistle right away. And we're going to get a timeout, it looks like, for City College of San Francisco. So we'll take a timeout as well here with eight minutes exactly to go in the first half. American River College 21, City College of San Francisco nothing. You're watching ARC Football presented by the Stones Radio Networks. Hi, I'm Monica from Ace Body Shop in Town. We are a family-oriented business. We've been in business for over 30 years. We are located downtown Lincoln at 333 Lincoln Boulevard in Lincoln, California. We do automotive repair and 24 hours towing. Our phone number is 916-645-2859 or you can find us on the web. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kinds of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. Back to Beaver Stadium, 21 to nothing. For the Beavers. And uh, I thought we were going to get a snap there. But okay, so now we are okay to go. Two out to the right for Miller. He turns, he fakes it to. Goes back, throws it across the middle. And that is right into the ground there. So it is incomplete. Good pressure and good coverage there by the Beavers. And again, this defense 
putting the Rams, if I sound like a broken record, in another third and long situation. So ARC doing its job so far. Yeah, that one intended again, as you said, for Cam Johnson. Jordan, who uh, picked up his 22nd catch of the season, over 290 yards and a touchdown. We have third down and 12 yards coming up. Ball at the 37-yard line. Make that 13 yards coming up. It's Miller is back in the shotgun, empty backfield, three to the right side. Let's see if he goes quick to the right side. He's going to, he's got under pressure now, gets away. He's got a little bit of room on the left side. He motioned someone to block for him, cut off by the Beavers and tackle it about the 44-yard line. So good pursuit. It looked like Jordan had a little more room than that, but the Beavers got over quickly. Yeah, and I think that's one thing we've seen from this Beaver defense all year long is their closing speed and their pursuit. A lot of these times we've seen these turn into big plays, and ARC just finds a way to not let it hurt them. Another time where they got to Miller, it seems like he got away, and that time it looked like he had some room to move. But the Beavers, as you say, with the pursuit, are going to force another punt by the Sharapur, who had a tough punt the last time, just about a 19-yarder. This one is going to be a little bit better. It's a very low punt. It bounces. It takes a very good hop, though, for the Rams. It's going to roll inside the 20 at about the 17-yard line, and that's where the Beavers will start this offensive possession. They lead 21 to nothing. Jordan, everything seems to be going their way defensively and offensively. So what's the key for them right now? I think right now the biggest key is not only – come down and get more points on the board, but I think you want to try to reestablish the run. It felt like the run got taken away from you a little bit in this one. With a three-score lead, I think the key is chew up a lot of this clock going into the half and keep this on the ground as much as you possibly can and just really don't give City College much to work with when they get the ball back. Yeah, yeah much to work with or much to hope for, really, is basically you're trying to take the hope out in the last seven minutes of the first half. Leith has two running backs next to him, one to his right, one right behind him. He's going to go ahead and hand it off. A little bit of a room on the right side. Get up close to the 20, maybe about the 19-yard line for the Beavers on that first down run, but set up a second and about seven. And that was Joshua Moore on the carry, and I believe that's just his second carry of the game in this. But again, another piece of this Beaver backfield that is very scary, and we haven't even called Torrey Hendrick another name that's been a regular here today. So. Yeah, Joshua, five yards or more is what I call him, and he got four that time. Call it second and seven, as the great PA announcer Jamie Coffey only gave him three yards. Thought that was very mean of her. Seemed personal. It did seem personal. One back with uh, Leith. Uh, he's got uh, tight formation to the left side. He's going to hand it to the left side. Good job by the Rams now bouncing away to 20 to 25, coming down the sidelines and knocked out of bounds as Joshua, five yards or more, kind of made something, Jordan, that time out of nothing. And that time you got the or more right there. It did look like he was going to be stuffed at, you know, one or two-yard gain. Just found a way to bounce it outside in some running room. And, again, what makes this backfield so dangerous. And now you have a Avant Jacobs with fresh legs right. coming in. That's a scary sight for San Francisco. And then sometimes you have Casey Riley coming in, and you've got a, a tired defense trying to tackle a 245-yard back. Yeah, or 245-pound back. Yeah, Joshua, five yards or more. Average. That was the average that time, not both times. So Jacobs is back in, first down. We'll call it at the 39-yard line. Jacobs is in motion to the right. He's already got a touchdown catch in this game. Leith empty backfield, comes back. He's got time. He throws the ball right, and it kind of balloons up on him. Coming back for it is the Beavers. He makes the catch on the right side. I think that was Jacobs making that play. And how about Avante Jacobs? Only nine catches this season, two huge ones for the Beavers right here. You get a touchdown. And that play right there almost feels like he's fielding a kick return. I mean, I get, he is your kickoff returner, so he's got the part, but great play there for him to work back and keep his feet in and make that play. Gain of about 20 yards, call it 21, but that looked to me like Kenny Leith was trying to throw that ball deeper, drive that ball deeper down the sideline, and it just kind of ballooned on him. It did look like that a little bit, but hey, you know what? In the stat sheet, it's going to look like a big gain, and <laughs> Leith is going to be happy about that. I think he owns Jacob's dinner after that I one. I believe that is true, and a first down at the 40-yard line. So now the, the Beavers kind of showing a lot of their uh, arsenal out there, running the ball, passing the ball. One back behind Leith. He's going to turn around and hand it off. It's Avante Jacobs, and he is uh, knocked down after about a two-yard loss. Tremendous penetration that time by the Rams' defensive line to set up a second and 12. And that was Kylan Font as a sophomore out of Elk Grove High School. So 
a little bit of a homecoming game for him and just looked like he beat his blocker right off the edge and was chasing Jacobs before Jacobs even got the ball. Report from the sideline. Kenny Parker's got something for us. Kenny, what's going on down there? Yeah, linebacker number 40, Matulich, got dinged up on the sideline, went down and seemed to twist his ankle really bad. He's been getting treatment. I mean, this guy is a stud. He <laughs> could barely walk when he first got over here, kind of pushed the trainers off him, started yep. jogging down the sideline and uh, came back, got some treatment. They just taped him up. We're going to see if he can go. I I'd be shocked, but uh, it's looking like he might go back in the game. Second and 12, quick slant caught in there by Freeman. He gets away from the first tackler, comes to the 35, cuts it back to the 30, down to the 26-yard line. I got to say it, Jordan, the electrifying Robert Freeman does it again. Yeah, it looks like he was going to get tackled right away, finds a way to slip off, and then in a way the defender slipping off him. All the guys are going one way. Freeman cuts the other way, and I think they might just coat his jersey in Vaseline before the game because I don't know how he slips some of these tackles. The saying cuts on a dime gives you nine cents change is kind of a Robert Freeman kind of thing, and I think I might have made, just made that up. But interesting to hear from Kenny Parker that what we thought was true. Robert wasn't even in the game. He was on the sideline, got knocked off, knocked his trainers off of him and said, I can handle this, and is trying to work himself back into it. Joshua Moore in behind Kenny Leith. First down at the 27-yard line for the Beavers. Turn around, hand that one right up the middle to Moore. Tried to kick it to the outside. Comes back in. He's going to get stopped, though. Tried to make his way. He might have got a yard, maybe two out of that one. Set up a second and eight. And you know what? I'm still going to coin that as part of a Joshua five yards or more. Because yes. he didn't have a lot to work with. And he found a way to get five yards from where he was getting hit initially. And how about the efforts from number 63 there for the Beavers? It looked like that was Christian Newberry Jones kind of grabbing more and pushing him forward yeah. for a little bit extra. Newberry Jones, one of the... Uh, not unsung heroes of the team, but one of the ones who doesn't get his name mentioned enough, but he is just an uh, all-conference performer, if not an all-state performer for the uh, Beavers in that offensive line, which is all all-state performers. 2.18 to go here in the first half. Second down. Turn around. It fakes the handoff. Lee trying to get some open. He's got a receiver. That's Riley. He makes the catch inside the 20, the 15, down to about inside. It's called at the 13-yard line. A big gain. Casey Riley doing it all for the Beavers today, Jordan. And again, you know, we say it a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but Riley has really shown that he's got some speed in the open field Absolutely. he can get going. And a bowling ball, too. That's a guy, 240 pounds. You do not want to see running at you if he's going at full speed. Right. He's getting himself a little bit of momentum. He's coming downhill. He made a nice catch on a pass that Leith put right out in front of him. And uh, got the big gain down to about the 14-yard line with 1.42 to go in the half. Beavers first and 10. Moore, the uh, sole running back, he's behind Kenny Leith. He's going to hand it to Joshua. He's got past the first tackler. Now he gets into second, trying to get to 14, comes back to about the 11-yard line. And again, he was pushed back five yards and then came back and got three. Yeah, again, this is another one now, I think, if you're the Beavers. The clock, you're starting to work just as much. Only 1.15 remaining in the first quarter. You've moved down the field very well. Now, how are you going to punch this in to really just put the exclamation point on what's been a really a perfect first half for the yeah, Beavers? Yeah, Von Jacobson, also a, number, a name we haven't said before. Elias Brown, it looks like, is in the freshman out of Rockland, who's a, a good short yardage carrier as, as well for the Beavers. The Beavers using a lot of the running backs in different positions, uh, quasi-tight ends, if you will, second down. Lee turns around, hands it right up the middle. Got a little bit of running room in there. Going to get down to about the six-yard line. So Beavers with another good gain here. Uh, set up still, though, a third down, Jordan. And Riley keeping those legs moving. And you mentioned Elias Brown, another running back that is very serviceable and was ready to be plugged in right away. He had a great senior season at Rockland last year, helped lead him to a section semifinal. And now he's really found a role in this backfield, getting some playing time as the season has gone on. And a big piece of this backfield here in November. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a clock, a second's ticking away, but finally the time is called. We're down to 16 seconds to go in this uh, first half. And the Beavers with the 21 to nothing lead. And Jordan, for a second there, they were taking so much time, I thought they were going to be content with, you know, if we have to take a field goal, we'll go ahead and take it. Then they decided to go ahead and call the timeout. It sets up a third down, short yard to go, but kind of the clock's more of a concern than the yardage right now. Yeah, and it feels like this is a situation where you're going to go probably for one stab at the end zone here. I don't necessarily think, I mean, you can get a first down, but I'd be kind of surprised with the amount of time left if you're mm -hmm. going for the first down. I think you're content. If you don't get this first down, kick the field goal, make it 24 nothing, and just 
get a little squib, get out of here and regroup and just find a way to put this game away. And, you know, it's funny. We talked about it before the game uh, in the pregame show as far as the arsenal of weapons that the Beavers have and how many. And we've actually seen a lot of them come in. And Casey Raleigh has come in. He's catching the ball. Avanti Jacobs is splitting out as a wide receiver. He's catching the ball. Joshua Moore is running the ball from the backfield. As you mentioned, Trey Hendrick, we haven't seen him yet. Elias Brown has come in, and he's done some stuff as well. So it's great to see. Stevenson has not really been involved yet, but Freeman has been a a big part of the offense. And so as we go here for third down, the ball marked at about the seven-yard line. Third and about four, but as Jordan said, we've only got 16 seconds, so it wouldn't be surprised to see maybe Kenny Lee take a shot into the end zone. He's got 16 seconds, though. He's got his uh, team spread out. He does have more in the backfield to his right. Now, he did get Jacobs coming out of the backfield for a touchdown earlier. He goes back to pass. He's under pressure. Cuts it to the back of the end zone. Got the hands on it. Could not make the play. Looking for Zoltan Homley back there, the uh, tight end. But he got his hands on it and couldn't make the catch. And, Jordan, it looks like we'll go for three points here. Yeah, a good defensive play there by Janari Boone because it looks like Homley was actually going to have that. And Boone came in with the hit and kind of just – Made Homie have to adjust enough that it jarred that ball loose. And, you know, I think if you're San Francisco, you're going to take essentially 24 nothing over 28 yeah. nothing because it still, in a sense, keeps it a three-score game with uh, three touchdowns, three two points. Yeah, we talk about the Beavers tight ends. They've combined for seven touchdown reception on the season between Homley and Seth Bozzi. So here is McCreary here. He's about to be about a 25-yard field goal. It's up, and it looks good, and it is good. So with seven seconds to go in the first half, the Beavers kind of took their chance. Like you said, Jordan, uh, they want to keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock moving, took the chance with the pass, had the ball to Homely. They have Homely and Bozzi, the, the tight ends, and uh, off his hands, good defensive play, but they come through, and McCreary has been automatic almost with the field goals. I think he is uh, now seven out of eight as far as field goals are concerned. The Beavers take the 24 to nothing lead. Now, did you mention that score earlier? Did, uh, did you mention the score on the college level? Uh, I don't think we mentioned it on the air, but Sacramento State moving on to the next round of the FCS playoffs with a 42-35 win over North Dakota on the road. That's so big. That's huge. That was the, uh, the questions of why did Sac State get in over UC Davis? But, hey, you know what? Sac State makes a statement and says, hey, we belong in this playoff, and you know, good job on them and Sacramento being well represented in playoffs at various levels in this yeah, and weekend. If you, if you go on the road, you know, it's always a good win. If you go on the road to D- one of the Dakotas or to one of the Montanas, then that is a really tough win, you know, in Big Sky play or in playoff play. And that is a huge win for the Hornets. Congratulations to them as they'll move on to the next round, uh, as you say, of the playoffs. Seven seconds to make that six seconds to go here in the first half. It'll be Andres Prieto kicking off. Last time he went this direction, the ball was returned. I believe it was uh, uh, Jalen Henderson brought it back. Brought it back about 25 yards from his own one-yard line. So we'll see if uh, Andres can uh, get this one into the end zone. 24 to nothing in favor of the Beavers. That one is down low. He's going to run it on the ground. Big hop and picked up and then juggled and picked up again about the eight-yard line coming up the left side. Got a little bit of running room up the middle to the 35, out to the 38-yard line. But that should be the end, and it is the end of the first half. So, Jordan, a great half for the Beavers. They go into the locker room. Our score, Merrick River College Beavers 24, City College of San Francisco Rams. Nothing. We'll have a short break here for halftime and be back with our second half of this one right here on the Stones Radio Networks. I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part is about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Placer County's best kept secret is back for another exciting summer at historic McBean Stadium. 33 action packed home games loaded with fun for the whole family. Local beer, wine, and eats. Fireworks, giveaways, theme nights, kids zone, and more. 
Come join in the fun and enjoy small town baseball with Major League Entertainment. Tickets on sale now at LincolnPotters.com. Lincoln Potters Baseball. Come on out and join in the fun. Hi, I'm Monica from Ace Body Shop in Town. We are a family-oriented business. We've been in business for over 30 years. We are located downtown Lincoln at 333 Lincoln Boulevard in Lincoln, California. We do automotive repair and 24-hour towing. Our phone number is 916-645-2859, or you can find us on the web. American River College is a top-tier community college sports program that provides student-athletes with the opportunity to thrive both athletically and academically. ARC Athletics is currently ranked fifth in the state and second in Northern California. With over 19 sports programs, our athletes compete with the region's best athletes. Our diverse and dedicated coaching staff helps athletes develop the skills necessary to compete at the next level. Start your community college athletics journey with us. American River College, Sacramento's best athletic program. Go Beavers! Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kinds of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco. We'd love to see you. Fast flung on and missed. He got him on strikes at 86 of the off speeder. Bruno strikes out the side. Potters get the win 8 to 5. Sanchez, one on four. She gets it back, trying to get it back to Gallegos. What a spin move. Her shot is blocked. She has a control, puts in the goal. Witt trying to set it, and she sets it over for Molly Harrison, pokes it over. Short set for Barrios, and her slam goes out of play. He's going to look that way. Now he's going to duck down the middle. He's got a guy wide open at the 18. Get it. That's Robert Freeman. And Robert's trying to make a couple of moves. He comes back to the 15. Comes down to the 10. He gets a block to the 5. Burt and his broad jump, 99th percentile, all while being in the 96th percentile at weight. Wow. So I know you just had a baby, so you were really into this I, percentile I know about thing. The percentiles, so you yeah. seem very comfortable with that, yeah. Yeah, this. Yes. Ooh. Well, he, <laughs> you may not see that ten dollars, my friend. That woman does not well, like to fork he, over the cash. He, I heard him say he'd pay you next Tuesday. So <laughs> that, you know what that's I mean. right. I didn't bring pad and paper, so I don't well, know what to tell you what's going to happen when I come back. First so of all, I we take notes. We may end up in one, uh, especially on, on this episode of the Stones and Toys Show. <laughs> oh, snap. Uh,
I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part is about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Placer County's best kept secret is back for another exciting summer at historic McBean Stadium. 33 action packed home games loaded with fun for the whole family. Local beer, wine, and eats. Fireworks, giveaways, theme nights, kids zone, and more. Come join in the fun and enjoy small town baseball with Major League Entertainment. Tickets on sale now at LincolnPotters.com. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Hi, I'm Monica from Ace Body Shop in Town. We are a family oriented business. We've been in business for over 30 years. We are located downtown Lincoln at 333 Lincoln Boulevard in Lincoln, California. We do automotive repair and 24 hour towing. Our phone number is 916 645 2859, or you can find us on the web. American River College is a top-tier community college sports program that provides student-athletes with the opportunity to thrive both athletically and academically. ARC Athletics is currently ranked fifth in the state and second in Northern California. With over 19 sports programs, our athletes compete with the region's best athletes. Our diverse and dedicated coaching staff helps athletes develop the skills necessary to compete at the next level. Start your community college athletics journey with us. American River College, Sacramento's best athletic program. Go Beavers! Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. 
You get a great value when you come here. Large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kind of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a super taco. We love to see you. Fast flung on and missed. He got him on strikes at 86, the off meter. Bruno strikes out the side. Potters get the win, 8-5. to five. Sanchez, one on four. She gets it back, trying to get it back to Gallegos. What a spin move. Her shot is blocked. She has it controlled, puts in the goal. Witt trying to set it, and she sets it over for Molly Harrison, pokes it over. Short set for Barrios, and her slam goes out of play. He's going to look that way. Now he's going to duck down the middle. He's got a guy wide open at the 18. Get it. That's Robert Freeman. And Robert's trying to make a couple of moves. He comes back to the 15. Comes down to the 10. He gets a block to the 5. Burt and his broad jump, 99th percentile, all while being in the 96th percentile at weight. Wow. So I know you just had a baby, so you were really into this percentile I know about thing. The percentiles, so you yeah. seem very comfortable with that, yeah. Yeah, this. Yes. Ooh, well, he, <laughs> you may not see that ten dollars, my friend. That woman does not well, like to fork he, over the cash. He, I heard him say he'd pay you next Tuesday. So that, you know what that's I mean. right. I didn't bring pad and paper, so I don't well, know what to tell you what's going to happen when I come back. First so of all, I we take notes. We may end up in one, uh, especially on, on this episode of the Stones and Toys Show. <laughs> oh, snap. Uh, Safety first. I think we're ready to rock.
spitting, scratching, spraying, and spinning. someone take your temperature. Welcome back. Second half action just about ready to go here from Beaver Stadium. Beavers lead at 24 to nothing. Mark the Phantom Low here with Jordan Georgeson, Storms McCoy behind the glass, and down on the field, Kenny Parker. And Kenny got a lot of work being a very busy sideline reporter <laughs> down there. Kenny, what's going on? Yes, sir. I was able to catch up with Coach Jimmy Collins for SF going into halftime. Obviously, he wasn't very pleased. Uh, I, you know, I kind of ask him when, when the football game's going this way, what do you do? And he says, we got to execute the game plan. We've been in this situation before. We're a talented team. Everyone knows it on this team. And we just got to take it one play at a time and get back into this. We've been here before. Fantastic. We'll get back to you. Did you if you got a chance to talk to Coach O and the Beavers, uh, we can. Uh, it looks like we have a minute here, Kenny. So if you talk to the uh, Beavers, where are the Beavers talking about? Well, I didn't get a chance to catch up with Coach O. He's, he's a little busy coming out at halftime. But I did catch up with Coach Lopez, the defensive lineman coach. And I said, you know, what do you tell these guys, first of all, to get them to play like that? And what do you tell them at halftime to keep them playing like that? And he said he preaches controlled aggression. He wants them right on the line, not over it. Uh, you know, they've been hurt times past the season with, you know, sloppy penalties and stuff like that. But he wants them aggressive but not over the line. Uh, thank you, Kenny Parker from the sidelines. Uh, we have the kickoff went into the end zone but is returned by the uh, Rams, and they're trying to push it out. Let's see if they get it out to about the 23 or 24-yard line. So, Jordan, what do you expect to see uh, from the Rams as we start on this uh, very important first drive of the third quarter? I expect to see a very aggressive offense to start. I would not be shocked to see a trick play. I'd expect in the f first three plays here some type of stab deep down the field. I know they're banged up on backup quarterback, on backup receivers, but they've got to try to find some type of big play to ignite this offense and move this ball down the field in a big chunk and kind of recapture some of that momentum from the first half. Absolutely, and uh, we uh, have the Beavers here. They have the controlled aggression. You're looking for a surprise play from the uh, from the Rams who are missing, as we talked about, two of the uh, two of the top receivers. We'll talk about that after this play as Miller is in the shotgun. Turns around and hands it off right back up the middle. Got a little bit of a hole there. Going to get up to about the 27, so a short gain there. Yeah, Robert Matulich, number 40, is in a walking boot for the Beavers down the sidelines. Kenny sends us word. Also, number 55 for the uh, Rams has got his arm in the sling. Let's see, that is... Uh, Daniel Maleni, who is uh, out of the game for City College. And uh, we talked about wide receivers Max Rodardi and Jeremiah Crum, two of the top receivers for the Rams, not available for them today. So Miller, second down, turns around, hand, fakes the handoff. He still has it, but he's also being shadowed, throws it down the right side, gets a completion as the Beavers defender overshot the ball. It's going to get up to around the 45-yard line. So, Jordan, there's a big play early on for the Rams. Yeah, big play there, and it looks like that was number 44, I want to say. Looks like trying to get a number on that, but we'll say 44 tentatively right now, which would be probably not Dexter Simmons the second because he's <laughs> listed as a linebacker, but either way, I don't think that was a first read on that play, but a good heads-up play by Miller to get those chains moving. Beavers almost had the interception, almost had the knockaway, but it's a first down. Under 14 to go here. 
And Miller now back to pass. He's got a guy across the middle, but his ball is going to be down low. And I think the pressure again, Jordan, affected Miller on that throw. Yeah, I definitely think it did. And uh, actually confirming that number, that is a – So it was Dexter We thought it was Simmons. 44, so – well, uh, we, we talked about time. Rodardi not being there. Jeremiah Crum, they combined for 78 catches, over 1,300 yards and 16 touchdowns. So uh, the uh, Rams looking a little deep, deeper on their depth chart, and uh, I guess Simmons can switch over and be a backup wide receiver. Second down, 10 yards to go, ball in the 45 of the Rams. Just getting started here in the second half. Beavers lead 24 to nothing. Turn around, and that's a fake handoff. He's going to get under pressure as Miller. He throws the ball down the side. He's got a guy open, and it looks like he makes the catch inside the 35 at about the 33-yard line, so a good throw on the run by Jack Miller. Yeah, and it looked like that was Brandon Newton that reeled that one in, a name that you know has been very involved in the passing game today. And, Phantom, we talked about you know this team coming in a little bit banged up, and it feels like, you know, turning to guys like Newton, turning to Mahasin, I mean, guys that weren't necessarily the number one, two options, now they are. And it's a tough defense to be asked to do that against and step up against. Absolutely. First down ball on the 34. One running back behind Miller, who's completed a couple of passes on this drive already. Just five for t- 10 in the first. He's going to pass again. He's under pressure. And this time the Beavers are going to they're going to have a meeting at the quarterback, Jordan. And everybody was attending. It looked like Ken Tilford actually came in from his corner position to lead that blitz. Chased him into the defensive line that ended up getting the sack. So Ken Tilford, the uh, nation's leader in almost interceptions, yes. comes up with an almost sack. And, you know, we see this on almost every play for the Beavers defense. They have some uh, a lot of substitutions. And I think that's a, a reason that, you know, if you come to America River College and you can play, you're going to play. And that's a really good tool for them to use a seven-yard loss. be second and 17 now from the 43-yard line. Empty backfield for Miller. He's looks like he's going to get rid of it fast. He finally gets it across the middle. It's completed at about the 33. Now the ball on the ground. Let's see what the call is. And it's going to be called an incomplete pass. I thought that might be it. It's a great job by the Beavers. Uh, close in on the receiver, Jordan, on a uh, slant play by the Rams. Yeah, it looked like Newton never really fully had possession of that. It kind of bobbled a little bit. He tried pulling it in, but just never had full possession. And in a way, I think a very big sigh of relief that that ball was dropped because that would have been a disaster on what's been so far the best offensive drive of the game for the Rams. Yeah, it looks like the Beavers might be in the situation. We're going to send four guys at you. Everybody else is going to go lie back, let the guy catch it in front of us, and then put the hit on him, and that's the way we're going to play defense. Third down, 17 yards to go. They've got to get down to the 24-yard line. Miller back to pass again, looks down the middle, comes to the left side, a short dump off. I think that's Mahassan makes the catch inside the 40, but he's going to be stacked up at the 40, the 36, 37 yard line and will be well short of a first down. Yeah, it looks like a little design screen pass there to Mahassan. Tremaine again reads it perfectly, gets in there, fights through the blockers, and you know, you need a big chunk of yards and don't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Looks like we are definitely four uh, four down territory for a team down by 24. As you mentioned, Jordan, kind of strung together a couple of their best offensive plays of the game. So they're going to go ahead and go for it here at the 37-yard line. Got to get down inside the 25, so we'll call it fourth and 13. 11.40 to go in the third quarter. Beavers lead by 24. Motion for the Rams. Reset on the right side. Rolling to his right is Miller. He's going to gun it. It's going to be complete, but knocked out of bounds well short of a first down. So, again, Ben don't break for the Beavers uh, defensively in another impressive sequence. Yeah, and he was looking for Mahassan again. It felt like there were two receivers that were in single coverage beyond the first down marker. So, I don't necessarily understand the logic of throwing to Mahassan there. I think I would have rather taken the shot down the field and risked an interception or pass breakup because throwing behind the line of scrimmage, you're asking a lot of Mahassan right there to – make a lot happen against a defense that pursuits to the ball very well. Yeah, they got it down to the 30. It just kind of ran out of room. Maybe if they got him the ball on the hash mark instead of leading him a little bit out of bounds, it would have been a better play. But first down for the Beavers on the 30. Kenny Leith is the quarterback. Six for 13, 99 yards and a touchdown in the first half. Turns around, hands that ball right back up the middle. A little bit of running room, jitterbugging through and getting up over the 35 to about the 37-yard line. That's Avance Jacobs, who uh, had a pretty good first half, nine carries and 55 yards and caught a touchdown pass, Jordan. Yeah, and he also had that big uh, reception there. That, Absolutely. Uh, got the float there. So why not give the ball to the hot hand, let Jacobs kind of establish it, and already you're working with a pretty good field position right here. And if you can keep this run game going, it's going to be a very smooth second half once again. Yeah, as you mentioned, Jacobs with the touchdown reception out of the backfield also lined up as a wide receiver and basically caught 
uh, 20-yard pass from Kenny Lee. So second down, about four yards to go. They're going to hand that one right back up the middle again. This one is stopped by the Rams and stopped tough right about the 36-yard line and pushed back, so it'll bring up a third and four for the Beavers. That was number 43, Kuwan Green and Simeon Mitchell, both high school teammates from McClemens High School in Oakland, combining for San Francisco on that big tackle. And they share the lead in sacks with seven for the uh, Rams. We talked about 36 sacks on the season so far for City College. Green with 10 tackles for loss. Mitchell with 13. So that must have been a pretty tough high school team with those two anchoring the front line defensively. Third down and four yards to go at the 36. Leith is in the shotgun. He's got a couple of backs behind him. He's got Freeman resetting. He's going to try to get that ball up the middle, but it's going to be shut down by the Rams. Not even close to getting through for a first down. He'll bring up fourth down. It looks like the Beavers will have to punt it away. Yeah, and I think just a second punt for the Beavers today and the first time that we've actually seen Prieto called out to punt right. because the get first one was from Leith. Um, if you're the Beavers, though, I think you're okay with the punt there with how your defense has been playing. And I think you want to run the ball there because you want to keep the clock running. I know it's early third quarter, but still, you know, when you've got the 24-point lead, every second is important. You go ahead and keep the clock running, and you turn it over on the Prieto punt now with nine and a half to go in the third quarter. Andres, 33 and a half yards per kick. And that one is a high snap. He has to go back and get it. He's going to have to run it. And uh, he's going to be tackled at about the 20-yard line. And, Jordan, I don't know about you. I didn't think he had to run that one. I don't think he had to either. I think that was a quick decision, the wrong one there. Davion Smith, the linebacker that comes in for the tackle. And now, all of a sudden, this is that scary territory where, you know, we've seen Coach O call timeouts here to kind of yep. regroup his team because he's going to want to keep momentum. Because right now, if you're the Rams, getting six points on this drive is absolutely pivotal. Yeah, I made the big play, probably the biggest play by the Rams, a, a plus play for them today. And again, Prieto, I thought uh, he wasn't under that much pressure, but he must have saw something coming out of the corner of his eye. First down at the 20-yard line for Miller and the Rams. One back behind him. He's going to hand it off. I think that is Washington cuts it through and is going to get down to almost down to the 10-yard line. Call it the 12 as the, uh, actually the pile keeps moving. Everybody's shoving everybody. And let's see if it's marked inside the 10-yard line. And we do have a flag thrown right where that flag. pile was. Yep. There's a lot of things this penalty can be in yeah, on either side. People coming from both sides to move that uh, pile. It looked like he was about the 12, and then everybody started moving. Ended up inside the 10-yard line. Let's wait and see what the call is on the field. And it's a block in the back there against the uh, Rams. And that's a big penalty. Yep. That's the one thing, Jordan, you don't want to do when you finally get a break in the game. No, you don't. And I got to say, that might be a first time I've seen a block in the back called on a big pile like yes. that. When there's so many bodies twisting, turning, moving, I'm like, I mean, I feel like a block in the back is almost inevitable in the, those piles. The whole point of the pile is to block in the back. Uh, so we have nine minutes to go, third quarter. Back to the 20-yard line, original line of scrimmage. So it'll be a first and 10 again. But uh, actually a pretty good run by Washington there. He got inside uh, – over tackle on the right side. Got it. Had about seven or eight yards on the play before the penalty. So we'll do it again. First down. Same setup with Miller. Turns around. Fakes the handoff. He still has it. He's under pressure. Let's it go for the corner. And he's got it. It looks like it is incomplete. Chavez had that one in his hands. Yeah. It looked like the receiver turned into the defensive back there. Hit jarring it loose. And. You know, Miller let that one fly a little bit. He was going for six, and Beavers ended up almost making him pay for it. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be the interception uh, as they jumped in there, and uh, Miller was under pressure uh, right before he threw that one away. So, again, we have a quarterback who doesn't have that much time in the system, and he's got, you know trying to make a couple of different reads, and that time let it go probably in a place he shouldn't have. So second down, ball out the 20. Turn around, it's going to be a handoff. We're up the middle, but this one's going to be stopped at about the 17. Maybe got to the 16-yard line, but it'll bring up a third and seven to go in what is obviously Jordan four-down territory for the Rams. Yeah, at this point, I think everything from here on out is four-down territory yeah. unless they can pull within one score and maybe have to play the field position battle. But at this point, points are at a premium, and that's what you need more than anything right now. And the Beavers with their, their defense, their backs against the wall, they kind of like that situation. Let's see what they do here on a third down. We'll call it seven from the 17-yard line. Miller in the shotgun. He's got the single running back behind him. 
Wide receivers out, one to the left, one in the slot left. He's going to look to the right, though, and throw it to a corner of the end zone up in the air, and looks like a touchdown. It is a touchdown for the Rams. Jalen Henderson, the defensive back, so one that ends up reeling that in, gets the jump ball, and huge if you're the Rams right there to convert because that was one of those drives where you stole the momentum right. with that fake punt stop, but if you don't find a way to get six points there, it almost feels like, that's even more of a backbreaker that you're thinking, I can't even score when I'm inside the 20-yard line. So huge to get that, break the shutout, and we'll see how this momentum changes throughout the second half. And an even better sign, too, Jordan, is a really well-thrown ball by Jack Miller into the corner of the end zone. There was not a lot of room for error on that one. It, it wouldn't have been intercepted, but it might have been incomplete, and he dropped it right in there to Henderson. So let's see the Rams here. Let's see if uh, they're setting up for the extra point. Keep in mind, this would make it a two-score game if they get it, but... They're going to go for two. 24-6 is our score. Miller is rolling to his right. He's going to get rid of it. He's got a guy open, and it looks like it was incomplete. Let's see. It looks like it was... And if you're American River, I know you, they break the shutout, but that stop on the two-point conversion is almost as good as a defensive stop because it now keeps us a three-score game still. Yeah, that could have been a two-score game. And uh, the ball it looked like it was a little bit uh, thrown behind the receiver on the goal line. It could not make the catch. And so it, really a positive, though, for the uh, Rams. They make the big stop uh, on the shutdown, the punt there, as Prieto tried to take off and, and didn't make the first down. And they come back, and they pull out a pretty good third-down play and get themselves on the board. And it'll be really interesting to see how the Beavers bounce back from this because one thing we have seen from Coach O is he knows how to regroup his guys, mm -hmm. refocus his guys, yep. and if we've noticed, they never get too high, never get too low, it feels like. So I'm interested to see how the Beavers come out and respond to this and see if you know that point, those points maybe gave the momentum to San Francisco or if it woke up the Bear in a sense. That might be too. Avanti Jacobs and Robert Freeman going back to return this kickoff from Joseph Oliveri. Yeah, they have done this a lot when they, you know, it's one side, the offense lets them down, the defense steps it up, or, or vice versa. So let's see how they do uh, as they have been stung a little bit with that touchdown play. But again, give credit to Jack Miller and to Henderson because it was a really well-executed play by the Rams on third down and a play they desperately needed to keep touch in this game as it's 24-6. to six. Beavers kept the ball on the ground basically the last time they had the ball. And I wonder if AR is expecting maybe a squib or a pooch kick because they've only got one man deep here. Granted, that man is Robert Freeman. Right. But a very rare look to have one man deep on a kick return like this. Let's see with Oliveira. Seven forty-five to go, third quarter. Beavers led twenty-four nothing at halftime. It's twenty-four to six now, and we're going to have a delay of game. It looks like on the kickoff, which is something you don't see every day. No, that's a, one of the more rare ones. <laughs> I think people often forget that that is a possibility. Yes, that there's a clock going on yeah, before you uh, kick the ball off. It would seem to take away some of the incentive for a squib or an onside kick would push back deeper into your own territory. It's got to feel pretty good if you're a return man like Robert Freeman yeah. standing in front of the 15-yard line as he's receiving a kick. And that's something you don't want to do as the kicking team is give Freeman a little bit more room back there. So here we go. Late, better late than never, and that's going to be a straightaway kick up by Oliveira. It's set down to about the 14, 15 yard line. Freeman coming up the right side, 30, 35, coming through the 40, 45, cuts it back at the 50, reverses field to the 40. He's being chased from behind the 30, 35, 20, cuts back in again, and he's still going. The ball's on the ground. And let's see it. The Rams are saying they've got it. Let's wait for a call from the referee as Freeman running all over the place. They are not signaling the Rams. Looks so like it, is the Ram it looks like the Beavers uh, covered that one, Jordan. And that was almost a disaster. But talk about oh the my flashy gosh. moves from Robert Freeman. That's exactly what you don't want. If you're the Rams, then you almost get bailed yeah. out by him losing the ball. But American River finds a way to recover. Crisis averted. Everyone exhale. And now if you're ARC, Let's go and punch this one in and maybe uh, talk to Robert Freeman, get him a little new gloves, maybe 80. something like that, some stick them. Is that allowed in the I don't, I don't, college I don't know if it's allowed, probably not. About 69-yard return by Freeman. We called it was going to be trouble. It was trouble, almost trouble for both teams, and here's Leith first down, the ball on the 15. 
And now the Beavers obviously want to punch this one in. Leith turns around, and we're going to get whistles right away. And we're going to have a delay of game this time on the Beavers. So not another mistake you just don't want to make. <laughs> the Rams did it on the kickoff, and the Beavers did it on the first play. Maybe a little bit disorganized. I don't know, but it, it'll be first down. Now the ball will be coming back. Let's see where it's marked at about the 20-yard line. And you wonder if there's a little complacency on the Beavers' side with, you know, the punting miscue, with the fumble there, now a delay a game, just some uncharacteristic errors that we didn't see in the first half. And as you mentioned, escaping by a hair there, the uh, disaster that could have been the fumble after that great return by Freeman. So Leith turns around, hands it straight up the middle, a little bit of room down to the 15-yard line, still moving, and they're going to get back probably the yardage uh, they lost on the penalty instead of Jordan a second and 10 at the 15. Yeah, and Jacobs hitting that hole hard and hitting it with two yeah. hands. I think ball security is being preached a little bit right now. Yeah, and I, I like what you're saying, to hit the ball hard. That's what they've got to do, kind of like redouble your efforts. You got the 24 nothing lead, then you kind of had a little letdown, had a little mistake, 24-6, uh, almost a disaster, and you come back and maybe kind of just you know reaffirm what you want to do, and Coach O, as you've talked about, as Kenny has mentioned it too, down in the sidelines is really good at getting this team refocused and so with 645 to go in the third the Beavers have a second down and the ball at the 15 yard line a couple of guys set out to the right for the Beavers Lee sends one of them in motion he turns around he's going to pass he's looking to the right he lays it out of the backfield caught at the 15 but just going to be a yard or two gain I think that's Casey Riley coming out of the backfield made the catch on the ball Jordan thrown a little bit too low for him a little bit too low, but he found a way to adjust really well and at least turn it into, you know, something there. Bounced off the first tackler, ends up taking the hit, but kind of a rare situation. We haven't really seen the Beavers deal with a third and long yet in this game. We'll see how they play it. You know, right now, I think the clock is more important than the points. You'll take six, but I think you're okay settling for three if it means 30, 40 more seconds tick off that clock. I think you really want to score six, and the reason I say this is because since 24 nothing, nothing really good has happened for you since then until the, the return, and I think you want to capitalize on that and show that you still can. Freeman in motion resets on the left side. Leith is back to pass looking left. Now he's going to have to get rid of it. He's under pressure. He's going to get sacked back at the 20-yard line. So Leith had time, had time, then all of a sudden ran out of time. It was a good job by the Rams defensive backs. And let's see what the uh, Beavers choose to do here at 5.30 to go. And it looks like Quincy Gallon's coming in, which would indicate maybe we're going to bring uh, see Logan McCreary. Yeah, and that was Kawan Green that ended up getting the sack there. And, yeah, now McCreary looking to put make this a 21-point game. Very crucial, though, because a missed field goal right here, and all of a sudden you're really putting a lot of hope back in that San Francisco team. Exactly. It looks like about a 37-yarder by Logan McCreary. He's already been good today from 25. Snap is down. It is good, and the kick is up. and looks good. Let's see, and it is good. So Logan McCreary coming through with a beautiful kick, and Jordan, you made the point. You don't want to come out of that little exchange without any points, and McCreary made sure you didn't. Yeah, and definitely. And to your point, though, like you say, I know I had said you're okay with three, but especially with how that drive went, I do think six is not a or is a little bit of a letdown now. And again, now a touchdown from San Francisco makes this potentially a 27-13 game, and you're staring at you know a game that this team is still very much in it with the explosive power that they have. So if your AR a stop here is crucial. Yeah, the, the only thing about that is that they're, you're going to make them drive more than 20 yards. And that's the thing that's going to be different, hopefully, if you're a Beaver. Mentioned that the ARC Alumni Association Crab Feed coming up on February the 3rd from 5 to 9 p.m. It benefits ARC Athletics. It's a huge fundraiser for the program. Go to ARCBeavers.com for tickets and for information. And here's Prieto. We'll be kicking it off for the Beavers. They lead it 27 to 6 and uh, really is a weapon uh, at this level to have a good kicker like McCreary to come in. And Prieto has also done it so this season, but McCreary has really been solid for ARC all season long. 4.59 to go, and here's the kickoff from Prieto. It's going to get into the end zone and out of the end zone, almost made it from uh, 35 yards or 65 yards away, but it goes through the end zone. It'll be a first down and 10 yards to go, and let's go down to the sidelines. Talk to our guy, Kenny Parker. Kenny? I mean, I'm sure I sound like a broken record this season, but, you know, there's some miscues. The uh, the, the special teams guys come off the field. The, the whole rest of the team screaming at them, we got you, we're going to get this back. They go right out, get it done. Freeman with the big, huge return, and it just speaks to the character of this team that they're constantly picking each other up no matter what happens. Absolutely, Kenny. Thank you very much for that. And uh, that kind of, you know, reinforces what we've been saying up here as far as Coach Owen, as far as the way, you know, you've got to uh, 
coaching is, is obviously very important, and in this case, it's, it's, it's a motivational factor as well. Jack Miller, who had a touchdown pass just a couple of minutes ago, is that quarterback for the uh, Rams. Got the single running back behind him. He's going to hold on to it and go back to pass. He's under pressure, lets it go wide up in the air and throws it out of bounds. And uh, probably a smart move by Miller as he was under extreme pressure and threw that one onto the track here at the stadium. Yeah, and it looked like that was Tremaine that was providing the pressure there. And smart move by Miller there. And that's a throw that you can already see the maturation from him from earlier in this game versus now. I think first quarter of that play happens, he either throws one up for grabs or, you know, doesn't get rid of it, takes a sack. So good job by him to just salvage the yardage on that play. Second and 10 ball in the 30 for the Rams. 4.52 to go, third quarter. They trail 27 to 6. They've got three wide receivers out to the right side. They throw a lot of quick screens, and this one is going to be a fake the pitch out, back to pass across the middle. Short completion gets to the outside. Good job by the Beavers to drop on about the 23 yard line. That's like number one. That was Desmond Hatfield Rushton coming up with a big tackle. Yeah, and it looked like Bruce Uperessa that was on the receiving end of that. And a scary side, he had a lot of room to work with. They actually made a defender miss, but good job by the Beavers to keep him going lateral and keep him from turning that ball upfield. Yeah, we've talked about Johnson and Aparessa, also uh, Henderson, some of the guys farther down on the uh, depth chart at wide receiver for the Rams trying to make an impact with the absence of Rodarte and Crumb. Third down. Back to pass, and another great pressure put on. That ball's flung up in the middle of the air and caught on the left side. What a play. Is it inbounds? I think it was. Caught at about the 45-yard line by Mahassad. What a play right there as uh, Miller just threw that ball up and hit Mahassad. And that's the second time now we've seen Miller make a throw in a very tight window, and he just dropped it into the breadbasket of Mahassan perfectly in the face of pressure. And we're really seeing Miller grow and mature as a quarterback right before our eyes in this game. Yeah, it's a great point, Jordan. That was a really, really good pass. He dropped it right in there. Trips to the right. He is the empty backfield. First down on the 45 of the Beavers. They have almost got to him about three times, and they're, they're pointing out to the alignment of the Rams moving, but uh, quick pass right away out here to the left side. Cut right back in Washington. He's hit at the 42, rolls inside the 40 to the 39 for a gain of about six. It'll bring up second and four. You can see the confidence growing in this Rams yeah. offense as they're moving down the field. You know, the body language is changing, and it just feels like these guys are starting to believe a little bit right now. And the Beavers, as we said, have been within a, a you know, a half a arm length of a sack the last couple of times. They just haven't been to get able to get to Miller. Second down, Miller's going to quickly throw that one out to the right. What a catch by Washington with one hand. He cuts it back in. Probably going to get enough for the first down inside the 35, but that pass it was, a, it was a disaster, and Washington made it into something. Yeah, and I think the Rams really are trying to find a way to get the ball to their playmakers with some space to work yep. with. Washington has really been a focal point of getting some of these quick passes. They're telling ARC, hey, if you're going to try to shut them down in the run game, try to do the same in the pass, and uh, we're going to keep going to them until you force us to do it. And try to uh, deflect the rush a little bit by getting rid of the ball quickly in the hands of Washington. First down, ball on the 34-yard line of the Beavers. Miller's got one running back. He's going to hand it off to that running back. A little bit of room gets down to about the 30-yard line. Gain of four brings up second and six. And they are coming with a little bit of a change in some of these uh, big, scary D linemen yep. coming in there now. And we'll see if this changes maybe how they bring the pressure here as a hurry-up offense. A for lot of substitutions by the Beavers. Second down, six yards to go. Washington, the running back. Over 500 yards on the season, eight rushing touchdowns. Miller, quick pass, throws into the middle of a lot of traffic, and it's going to be incomplete. And I think that might have actually been batted a little bit at the line of scrimmage. It looked like number 91 for AR, Garrett Risley, got his hand up there, and I don't know if he got a piece of that one, but the ball looked a little funky coming out of the hands there. Third down, ball inside the 30, and again, it's going to be four down territory for the uh, Rams. Miller had been going exclusively to the air here in the last couple of minutes. As Jordan says, getting his confidence, it seems. He's going to go ahead and hold on to the ball and take it himself, but he made a bad move there. It didn't make his move quickly enough, and he's dropped by the Beavers in the backfield. Yeah, and I don't think Mel Kyred's going to get an easier tackle for loss than that. All he had to do was stand there, and Miller just ran right into him. Felt like a read option that he saw the right read initially, and then it quickly went away very fast by a very good 
defensive line again by the Beavers. Fourth down, about six yards to go. Yeah, Miller called his own number, then kind of hesitated a little bit, and Red was in the right place at the right time. Fourth down, empty backfield for Miller. He's going to look to the right. He's got time. Guns it to the sideline. It's closed up by the Beavers, and see, was the catch made? I believe it was. The catch is made inside the 20. It'll be a first down, well-thrown ball again by Miller. Yeah, and Henderson working his way back on that little comeback route. Just gets enough for that first down to keep the chains moving. And now we've seen this Rams team start moving the ball on third and fourth down and converting, and that's going to hurt the Beavers. First down. Again, Miller is going to go to the corner just like the touchdown play, and that one's going to be way too far for an incomplete pass, bring up a second down. Yeah, it looks like the Beavers, who's the defensive unit, has been stellar all season and all day today, kind of needs to come up with a big play here. Yeah, they do, and I, I do like that no call there in the end zone. Yeah. Right there. I felt like it was uncatchable. Good defense there by Tilford, but it does feel like, you know, we had that dropped interception on the touchdown drive earlier. Feels like they need something like that again. Second down, ball on the uh, – just inside the 20 yard line. 10 yards to go. Single running back for Miller. Six foot five quarterback. Back to pass again. He looks to the left. Now he's going to try to run up the middle. He's got some room. Slows down and is closed down on about the 12 yard line. And Jordan, looks, as long as he kept moving, he was okay. Once he stopped, he was going to get trouble. And, you know, we were talking about the Beavers needing that big play. That almost felt like the one to do it when you have a quarterback that's just so exposed like that with a big D line yep. hitting him. It feels like that's a recipe for disaster, but. Credit to Miller for hanging on to that ball and keeping his team now in a third and short situation. Yeah, third down and about two yards to go. Ball outside the 10 on about the 12-yard line of the Beavers. Miller is in the shotgun. Empty backfield, and he's going to go ahead and hold on to it himself. Again, another run pass option. I, Jordan, I don't think he got to the 10-yard line to get that first down. I don't think he did, and that one was read very well by the linebacker. Number 48, Trevon Robinson, who I believe is getting a little more time with uh, Matulich out yep. right now. So good read by him, and now a decision to make, not necessarily a decision to make, but fourth and two in a situation of do you put the, keep the ball on the ground with a run game that struggled, or do you try to put it in the air? Yeah, you're thinking you can get it. And we should mention that Robert Matulich being out of the game does affect your Beavers defense, obviously, as he's a standout all-conference performer. Fourth down, going down to the end of the third quarter, Handoff by to Washington, yeah. and he is caught in the backfield. What a play by the Beavers to shut him down. It'll be first down, ARC. And who else but Josh Tremaine making the play. I mean, this kid, I'm starting to think there's no way he's not lining up offsides because how's he getting to the backfield so quick? I think I think basically what he, you know you talked about, are they going to put the ball on the ground? I think Josh just said, look, I'm going to sell out for the run. I'm going to get into the backfield, which, you know, remember early in the first quarter, Beavers were in the backfield all the time. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. A huge play by Josh Tremaine and the Beavers defense. We'll take a break here. At the end of three, it is America River College 27 in City College of San Francisco 6. You're watching ARC Football presented by the Stone. Radio Networks. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kinds of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco. We'd love to see you. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Placer County's best kept secret is back for another exciting summer at historic McBean Stadium. 33 action packed home games loaded with fun for the whole family. Local beer, wine, and eats. Fireworks, giveaways, theme nights, kid zone, and more. Come join in the fun and enjoy small town baseball with Major League Entertainment. Tickets on sale now at LincolnPotters.com. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Welcome back to Beaver Stadium. Start of the fourth quarter. Beavers first down after that big play by Josh Tremaine. First down at their own 15. They lead 27 to 6. Kenny Leith at quarterback. He's got trips wide receivers out to the left, and they're very close to each other on the left side. He's going to go ahead and hand the ball up the middle. Short, short gain, if any gain, for the Beavers is the Rams. Jordan, they've shown sporadically that uh, defensive line has been able to plug the holes, and we're going to get a penalty here uh, called late. Uh, we had, uh, looks like it was Homely that was tied up uh, with the defensive back for the Rams. Let's see what the call is. And by the reaction of ARC's bench, I'm guessing this is going to go against the Rams. 
De- number 20 on the defense, that is uh, Jalen Camp, linebacker out of uh, Terra Nova in Pacifica. He was uh, tangled up with Homely, and uh, I don't know if it was something he did or something he said, but the uh, 15 yards, which the Rams can ill afford to give up, uh, is going to get the Beavers a first down at their own 30-yard line. And especially now with the defensive line starting to hold its own a little mm-hmm. bit, you can't be giving up yards freely, especially when you're already behind trying to play catch-up here. So it'll be first down. On the 30, and the Beavers will probably take their time getting going here as we are in the fourth quarter. They lead it by 21. Freeman in motion from left to right. Now he resets out the right side. He's got single coverage. They're going to look at him, and let's see. He's going to try to stop and go. He is open the right side. The pass over his head makes the catch. Evades one defender. Now he's got two after him. He goes down the sidelines, out of bounds, somewhere around the 30-yard line. And Jordan, I don't know. He keeps doing stuff I can't believe he can do, and he does it all the time. I mean, he is a mix of Houdini and the Energizer Bunny because he's an escape <laughs> artist, it. and he's one of the most electric players I've ever seen. This kid does things that every time he touches the ball, he amazes me. And that was not an easy catch. It was a fine pass by Leith, but it was kind of back over his head, and he made the catch. And almost in the same motion, he uh, avoided the defender and uh, caused uh, the Rams to bring three guys in on defense to stop him. First down on a big play there, down to the 30-yard line. So a 40-yard play for the Beavers there. Freeman doing it again. First down at the 30. Makes the handoff, and Kenny Leith lets it go to the left side. Caught at the goal line by Stevenson. Touchdown. Stevenson, we talked about it, Jordan. He fends off a guy on the left side. When he's one-on-one in that corner, has the whole field to work with. He's hard to stop. He definitely is, and he has a four-inch advantage over the DB on that play, Trey Baker. And credit to Leith right there. I mean, you know, he has struggled in the first half. Great drive he led right there in the run pass option. You know, he looks at it. He sees a one-on-one matchup he likes. He pulls that away from Moore at the last second, throws it up to where only his guy can get it. Yeah, and he was under pressure when he made that throw, too, and threw it up to Stevenson. We talked about it. Uh, It's tough to to take in a one-on-one situation. So a big touchdown for the Beavers. They make the big stuff defensively, come up with a touchdown right after that, and McCurry's going to try to put the point through. And I think it's going to be – there's going to be maybe a penalty before the play. It might be offsides on the Rams. In that case, I think it would be good. Let's see. We had no signal on whether it was good or not. No, it's going to be a false start, and that's why we didn't get a signal. So false start will move the Beavers back five yards. But, Jordan, we have a second. Tremaine with the huge play, and the Beavers come up, and they use Robert Freeman, of course, with the big play and the pass to Stevenson. So we talked about, you know, adversity, motivation coming back, and they did it again. Yeah, and one thing what I really appreciate about this team is there's so many weapons, but you don't have anyone that's, you know, screaming for the ball or saying, hey, I'm going to get mine. It feels like this team is just so happy when any of their guys do something because it means they're winning and they're executing. Yeah, we hear that from Kenny Parker down the sidelines all the time about how they're pushing each other and lifting each other up. So McCurry's going to do the extra point from the 15. I got a 25-yarder. Let's see if that was good. But I believe a Ram crashed the party defensively before that play could get going. Although if they let the kick go through, I have let the play go through. Now the, the offside will be called. So we'll do it again. So we've had a penalty on both teams. So I think we've got that all out of our system. So we can do the play now and just let it go. I mean, they say the third time's a charm. They but say that. We'll see. We <laughs> We'll definitely see that as something that we will definitely do. Of course, the over-under on penalties of extra points in this one was set at two and a half, so this oh, is a big play for yeah, the betters. Yeah, this is a huge play Yeah, for all the, the betters around the country. Yeah, absolutely. Score from the other game, it looks like San Mateo in the third quarter leading Modesto 27-13. to 13. And now we have more whistles, and maybe Jordan the Ober is going to be. Uh, no, I think there's just discussion going on. Well, you know, there's so many great restaurants around this area. I think so. Maybe saying, they're hey, just. Maybe we'll, where are we going after yeah. the game? And they'll probably end up at Chick fil A. I mean, you yeah, can't go yeah, wrong yeah. with it. It's Saturday, go. so <laughs> get them while they're open. Get in and out. You got Chick fil A right down there. You can do that. 
So McCreary back at the 10-yard line for the extra point. Let's see if we can do this without further ado. Snap is good. Place down, kick is up, kick is good. So McCreary, after all that, puts the extra point on the board and makes it American River College 34 and City College of San Francisco 6. And uh, Kenny Leith with a couple of nice passes. We've talked about it uh, so far today. Looked a little bit off early on and has made some really excellent throws and been not bailed out but been helped, obviously, by Freeman with yards after the catch today has been insane for Robert. Definitely, and you know, credit to Lee. Those were the first two, uh, two of the first throws this game that it felt like he's looked kind of like himself. Yeah. And you know, we've talked about it up here off the air. It feels like this is one of those where, hey, he's not going to be kept at bay forever. So it felt like it was coming a little bit, but that one right there, I mean, two throws, and it feels like those two throws might have been the dagger in this one to where I'd be shocked if we see Leaf put the ball up in the air anymore today. And to be honest, if the defense gets stopped here, we might not even see Leaf again today. Yeah, 13 minutes, 19 seconds to go in this one. Beavers lead it 34 to 6. Seemingly on a course to take on San Mateo next week. That game would be in San Mateo for the Northern California Championship. The same two teams, Jordan, that played for the title last year. And uh, the Bulldogs took that one 30 to 5. So Andres Prieto with the kickoff here. Two returners back, Henderson and Washington. Another good kick by Prieto. It's going to send him into the end zone five yards deep, and they will return it out to the 10. Pressure at the 12, cuts it back to the 15, but closed down by the Beavers. Special teams right about the 14, and not a good decision there to bring that one out of the end zone. No, and Henderson broke a few tackles, tried to show us his uh, Robert Freeman impression. <laughs> and, you know, I got to wonder if that was preplanned, that, hey, you're returning this yeah. no matter what, because he seemed very – set on returning that ball the moment it was kicked and instead now it's going to put you back forcing an 85 yard drive yeah. now and things are looking very bleak if you're a san francisco fan and the first defender hit him at about the 12 yard line so it could have been worse so first down miller has looked very impressive lately he rolls to his left looking to his left hold still holds on to the ball keeps going and he's going to be tackled out there with a gain of just a couple yards he just kept rolling jordan couldn't find anybody yeah it looked like that we'll call that i don't want to say it's a sack because he got some positive yards yeah. but we'll call it a uh, coverage tackle there okay we'll like say that. because it just felt like no one was open and he just couldn't find anything to go with second down working quickly miller back to pass again this time he's looking down the middle and he's under pressure he cuts it out he's got a guy wide open at the 35 makes the catch rolls up to about the 36 or 7 four tacklers for the beavers but uh, not before the big gain for the uh, rams is going to go up to about the 39 yard line and that was newton one of the names that we've talked about stepping up big time he's really had a good second half here but you're the Beavers here. I think you're okay in a sense giving up the points. It's more so we're going to make sure you take as much time as yeah. possible to get down there. Yeah, he just sat down. It looked like inside about four different guys in his own defense. So Miller back to pass again, looking to his right. Post completed, it looked like, or maybe he separated him from the ball. No, the tackle made right away. That's Tilford, I believe, over there with the play. Yeah, Johnson reeled it in. Tilford was just on him from the start. And yeah, decent size game but Tilford keeps out from being a first down second and two now at the ball at the 47 Rams obviously working quickly here Miller with the ball back to pass he's got a little bit of time now he's under pressure runs back throws it down the middle he's got a guy open but closing quickly the Beavers let's see if the catch is made down there at the 28 yard line yes I believe it is and it looks like that was Detuan Pearson that caught that one it I knew someone caught that football, yeah. but I didn't know what jersey caught it. Beavers were closing in as the safety looked like he had a beat on that one. Couldn't get there right away. Another big play for the Rams and a first down as they're moving quickly with 11.25 to go. And now we're going to have either a false start or a timeout. Let's see what the call is. Yeah, that one was floated down the middle. And, you know, you float one down the middle, Jordan, and it's dangerous because you've got guys kind of marking them. And it looked like the Beavers defensive back there had an eye on that one and uh, didn't get there in time, and Pearson gave him credit for holding on. Yeah, definitely, and especially holding on through getting hit yeah. by two players like that. And it feels like the Beavers right now, you're probably not going to see a lot of press coverage from them for the rest of this game. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. knowing the hurry-up offense, they're going to drop their guys down the zone and just try to you know, take up as much time. 
Penalty is on the uh, Rams, and now Miller back to pass, steps up. He is hit as he's going to throw. Did he not get it out of his hands? Looked like he was going to let that one go. Another great play by the Beavers' defense, and uh, they've got a guy down in the backfield. Let's see. That's just everybody uh, unpiling there as a, another big play by the Beavers. And that was Risley right there with the sack, a name that we've called a lot today. And, you know, we haven't heard a ton from Gustafson today, but Risley's really stepped up yeah. and filled that role. And just feels like with his defensive line, with the four of them, you know one of them is going to step up. 17 yards to go for the uh, Rams. Miller back to pass again. He's got guys across the middle. He hits one and uh, caught down there inside the 20-yard line. And that's going to be really close to a first down for Miller making the connection. Another new name stepping in that. That was Richard Felder Jr., freshman out of, Antioch, or out of Deer Valley High School in Antioch. So another new receiver yep. stepping up in the absence of the leading receivers. And in the second half, you know, they've had a pretty good showing so far. Yeah, we have to mention again, Doran Hale, the regular quarterback, injured in the San Mateo game. Max Rodardi and Jeremiah Crum also missing uh, two of the top three receivers by numbers uh, for the uh, Rams. But we're going to have a penalty on that last play, Jordan. And that's going to uh, negate a really big gain across the middle, uh, as you said, by one of the other guys stepping up as a wide receiver of the ball back to the 34-yard line. And it looks like that might have been after the play because yeah. it's still first down, but march back deep, and that's something you can't do right now, especially when the yards and the time. 10.30 to go there, in so. the game. Miller, who's done better as, as this game has kind of sped up as far as, uh, you know, there's probably a little bit relaxed coverage by the Beavers. He's back to pass under pressure. Steps up. He's got time. He throws it down the middle. He's got a guy wide open in the end zone. Knocked away by the Beavers. Again, floating it up over the middle, Jordan, and floating it up just long enough for the Beavers to close on that one. And he was looking for Washington there, and I think they're a little bit fortunate that uh, two Beavers were both going for the pick on that because they had interception written yeah. all over it if those two Beaver defenders don't collide. Nice route out of the backfield, though, by Tyree Washington. He was open on the, uh, on the goal line, but it just took a long time for the ball to get there. So that brings up a third, uh, second down. Ball in the 34. Miller again with time. Steps up again. He's Now he's under pressure. Now he's going to get closed down right about the line of scrimmage. So, Jordan, if he doesn't get rid of it in the first count or two, the Beavers, with Josh, led by Josh Tremaine, are going to close in on him, and that's what happened. Yeah, and again, two more high school teammates combining for that. Josh Tremaine and Diallo Washington, both Folsom products making big plays for the Bulldogs and now big plays for the Beavers. Third down now, 10 yards to go. At the 34, Miller back to pass. Across the middle, and that one sails high over a uh, wide receiver who was doing a crossing right at about the 20, but that one not even close, brings up fourth down. Yeah, and I don't know if he was looking for maybe finding Johnson on a higher ball there, if there was a miscommunication on the route, but now fourth down, and it feels like, you know, it's already stacked against you, but if you don't get this, it might be time for some cleanup duty on both sides. Yeah, that uh, penalty after the play on that big uh, first down, it really uh, penalizing... Uh, the Rams, and now they have a fourth down. They've got to get down inside the 25. And, again, Miller spins away from pressure. He's rolling out to the right side. He's at the 35. He's going to let it go, and it's incomplete out of bounds. I don't think it would have got the first down anyway, so give the Beavers credit for some more pressure defensively. Jordan, and they're going to take over on downs with 9.34 to go in this one. Yeah, and, again, that felt like, you know, great pressure defensively and incredible coverage right there from the Beavers' defensive backs. And getting off the field, 934, we saw a 10-play, 75-yard drive that took 705 off the clock here. I expect to see very similar play calling here as the Beavers just try to kill this clock and get out of here unscathed with a win. Yeah, you make a great point because Miller rolled away from pressure, and a lot of times when you do that, you're able to find someone in the backfield because the defense uh, relaxes a little bit, but he was not able to. It tried to force one down the sideline. It was incomplete. So first down for the Beavers. Ball at the 33-yard line. One running back behind Kenny Leith. He's going to hand that one off. Right side, got a little bit of room, and coming up the right side, cut back to about the 38-39 yard line. A good gain on first down, sets up second and four. Yeah, and Joshua, five yards right five there. Five yards or more. Five yards yep. or more. And I think right now you want to see more of the five-yard carries. You'll take the 20, the 30-yard explosive plays, but I think you're pretty happy with three, four, five chunks down the field and just dinking and dunking your way down. Yeah, seeing some new numbers. Elias Brown is back in for the uh, Beavers as well as they're going to go ahead and look to the sidelines. 
as we go down under nine minutes to go in this one. Beavers trying to while away the hours and uh, advance to the NorCal final game next week. Just a single running back behind Kenny Leith. Turns around, hands it right off, cuts it through to 40, and that's going to get a first down for the Beavers. A great job running the ball there, and it'll be a first down. Was that Elias Brown with his first carry of the game? I believe that was actually our uh, speedster out of the oh. backfield, Casey Riley. Oh. There. Almost unfair having two DBs have to tackle him that are half his size, but he barrels through for, I believe, a six, seven-yard gain. He made a move so quickly, picked up the first down. Big play, Riley with that big 40-yard touchdown run in the first Sadwood, one of the biggest plays in this game for the Beavers. As they are trying to do what you said, uh, Jordan, which is uh, hold on to the ball and uh, suck the clock out of there. And uh, first down, ball at the 44 for AR. That's a fake handoff. Lee still has it looking to the right, but he doesn't really have anybody open. He just throws the ball away, which is probably a smart decision in that situation. You don't want to make a mistake. Yeah, I don't want to make a mistake, and I think throwing it away, too. You don't want to take a sack. I mean, you're up 34-6. You don't need Kenny Leith getting hit and right. potentially risking being out next week against San Mateo. Absolutely. You want to be Joshua, five yards or more, comes back in the game. Also, Thon Charles, who's been in and out of the lineup. Uh, Charles for the Beavers. It's got 10 for 145 and a touchdown this season. Second down. Ball at the 44. 8.02 to go in this ball game. Good crowd out here at Beaver Stadium. Really haven't mentioned that enough. Really great crowd out here to check this one out. Leith to the air again. He's going to be a quick hitter outside and it's fumbled and dropped out there by the Beavers. I think that was uh, Baker, uh, excuse me, Carter out there with the drop. Yeah, I was looking for Deontay Carter there. And interesting decision, put the ball in the air twice. I felt yeah. like, you know, maybe they're just trying to keep this San Francisco defense guessing a little bit so that they don't start cheating the run. But now you're sitting with a third and ten. You've stopped the clock twice. Probably not the execution you want to see if you're Coach O. Yeah, I think maybe you wanted to get the ball in Carter's hands. Maybe you want to get these guys a, a rep or two, you know, before next week because you never know. As we talk about the depth of the Beavers is one of their strengths. And, you know, Charles and Baker are guys that get in there. And Carter as well are guys that get in there and get snaps. And I think we're going to get a timeout here. As the Beavers, Kenny Leith is walking over to talk to Coach Joe. So with uh, 7.57 to go in this one from Beaver Stadium, our score, American River College 34, City College of San Francisco 6. You're watching ARC Football presented by the Stones Radio Networks. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Placer County's best-kept secret is back for another exciting summer at historic McBean Stadium. 33 action-packed home games loaded with fun for the whole family. Local beer, wine, and eats. Fireworks, giveaways, theme nights, kid zone, and more. Come join in the fun and enjoy small-town baseball with Major League Entertainment. Tickets on sale now at LincolnPotters.com. Lincoln Potters Baseball. Come on out and join in the fun. <laughs> I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part is about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an act. Beavers with it. Third down. Ball on the 44-yard line. Stevenson coming on the field the last moment because he couldn't figure out during the timeout that he was supposed to be out there. That happens all the time. Fake yep. oh, uh, left, looking back to the right, across the middle of the pass is floated out there and a nice defensive play by the uh, Rams to separate the receiver from the ball at the 48 and it'll bring up a fourth down. And I think you're going to love this name. That was Rocky Katonga oh. on the hit right there. I mean, that just sounds like a guy that's laying the way. That's a wrestling name. That's not a football name, but speaking great of, hit by Katonga speaking there. Speaking of wrestlers, how about the great wrestler Kenny Parker? He's down in the sidelines. Kenny, what's going on down there? I mean, just, you know, the, the, the series of few few back when they made that fourth down stop really energized the mm -hmm. whole team. Coming off the field like conquering heroes, surrounded by the offense, patting them on the back, and then – you know, just all aspects of the team picked it up at that point. I think it was pivotal in this game. Yeah, huge game right there. The punt by Prieto was a fair caught at the 22-yard line. So, Kenny, it's 
pretty much the same situation. I mean, you always talk about this. You know, one part of the team kind of has a letdown, and every other part of the team comes by to lift them back up. Yeah, and you can see it. When Stevenson caught that touchdown, the entire D-line got up, along with the defensive line coach, went over to congratulate him after he had, you know, been surrounded and lifted the sledgehammer. Uh, it's just, you know, a real close team that supports each other. And no matter who, who's making the play, you know, everybody's giving them their props. All right, Kenny, thank you very much. 7.44 to go in the game. Miller back at quarterback. He's coming back. He's got a little bit of room. No time. He lets it go down the sidelines and completed and knocked out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Jordan, we got to think about doing that here at Stones Radio Networks, you know, lifting each other up when we make mistakes. I think we do, but I think our, uh, our way of berating one another is really more of a fun way to do it. It's a healthier way of doing it. Yeah, it is a healthier way to do it. We have a penalty on that play against the Rams a hold, and so they're going to be pushed back. And, again, sometimes when your quarterback is escaping out of the pocket and he goes, you know, one side, you know, one of your linemen trying to hold on to one of those defensive linemen, and uh, he got caught doing that. So it'll set up a, a sec- or first down, and this time it'll be about 20 yards to go for the Rams. 7.34 to go in this one. Miller's been at quarterback the entire way and has picked up the pace here in the second half, but hasn't only been able to turn it into six points for the Rams. He's back looking down. He's going to be under pressure again, and he knocked down and looks like picked the ball up, a fumble picked up by the Beavers and run in for the touchdown. See what number we got there, Jordan. We got ourselves a touchdown run by a big guy. And that was number 92, Luke Levengood, 6'4", 273-pound sophomore out of Vacaville, Gets the big guy touchdown, and now you scored in all three phases of the game. Special teams touchdowns, several offensive touchdowns, and the defense puts a cherry on top of what should be another trip to the NorCal championship game. Yeah, it was a great job by the defensive line uh, to get in there and get pressure on Miller and knock the ball, and then Levengood picked up. He looked like a running back, too. He, he did. He, had no, he didn't think about jumping on top of it or anything. He just scooped it up and ran it right in. And I think that they might have just put Casey Riley in Luke Levengood's jersey or something oh, like that because be he looked brilliant. very comfortable running that ball. And they give him a sledgehammer when he gets to the sideline. I, lo- I love the, the weapons and the tools that they're giving these guys when they get to the sideline after turnover and he looks like he knows what to do with a sledgehammer which is which is good but kind of scary too so mccreary out there for the extra point to try to make it 41 to 6 it's placed down by quincy gallon and mccreary kicks it through 41 to 6 and uh, so the beavers uh, you know as you say jordan you know they they made the first touchdown a long long time ago was off a bad snap uh by the uh, rams uh, special teams and uh, the punter tried to fall on it, and it squirted out of his hands and, and picked up, I think, uh, by the uh, Beavers and covered it for the touchdown. And then we've seen a couple of offensive touchdowns, and now we have a defensive touchdown. They kind of do it every which way you can. Yeah, and, you know, we've seen this American River team have a lot of games where, you know, when it rains, it pours, and maybe they start off a little slow, and it starts off in a stalemate, and then all of a sudden, once they figure it out and find ways to score, it just feels like they can pick you apart in so many different ways. And even in the second half, San Francisco came out and it felt like kind of slowed them down a little bit. And American River just found the weakness again and picked them apart in different ways. And I know that San Francisco came in a little thin with some Absolutely, injuries. But yeah. I still don't think anyone was expecting 41-6 to six in the fourth quarter, even with the injuries in this one. Absolutely. And the Beavers looking to, to you know, they're, they're looking ahead. You know, we talk about how much they pick each other up and remember things, and they remember last year losing to San Mateo in the NorCal final, and they were looking to try to make that uh, a rematch in about seven days' time. And right now it'll be the Beavers kicking it off. Andres Prieto doing the honors, number 41, with 7.24 to go in this one. Last time, the Rams tried to run it out from about six yards deep, which didn't turn into the best idea. Let's see if they uh, do something like that here as Prieto puts his foot into it. It's high. It's not quite as deep. It's going to be on the four-yard line by the uh, Rams, taken out to the 20, and not going to get much further than that. And again, the Beaver special teams closes in on it and uh, keeps him out right around the 20-yard line. That was Trey Baker on the return there for the Rams and now at this point 718 you know all season fan we've talked about teams trying to salvage something for the next week but you know at this point there is no next week so right. it's interesting to see how the Rams kind of come out with this 
what they try to do for the remainder of this game offensively. And we're going to see, I would think, some new numbers uh, defensively for the Beavers. Let's see if that's it because you don't want to get anybody injured as we go into next week. So Miller, the quarterback, again back to pass. He is again under pressure. He gets rid of it up the middle, but nobody there really. And uh, give credit to the Beavers, uh, you know, getting late in the game, but they're still going after the quarterback. Yeah, and the tough thing with those screen passes is it takes a little bit to develop, and you're going to have to make that throw in pressure. And against a defensive line like the Beavers where, yes, some second strings are in on the defensive line, right. but these are second strings that have been rotating in all season. And if you look at the scores, have been getting decent playing time all season, yeah, it's so a, it's a very comfortable unit. Yeah, that's a great point you make. They are getting the, the playing time, getting the reps, second down, ball at the 20-yard line. Miller's got a guy coming out of the backfield, but he's looking across the middle, can't get rid of it. Now he's going to go out to his left side, run, throwing against the grain down the sidelines, and it's uh, incomplete. So once you get him going to his left, and once you get most right-handed quarterbacks, Jordan, going to the left, it's going to be tough for them to make a play. Looks like we do have a flag in the secondary there, and I'm okay. wondering if we're going to get a defensive hold or a P.I. call here. It sounds like uh, probably would be one reason why there was nobody open in the defensive backfield, but let's wait for the call. 7.02 to go. Beavers lead this one 41-6. to six. Fifteen yard penalty against the uh, defense, so that'll move it up to the 35-yard line and give a first down to the Rams with 7.02 to go here. Make it the 36-yard line. So it's the rare 16-yard penalty that is in first. <laughs> first down for the Rams. Two wide receivers to the right. Miller looking to his left. Gets rid of it and caught right about the 30, or excuse me, the 44-yard line. And it'll be another first down for the Rams. Matthew Kendall and Jordan Wagner combining on that tackle for ARC, and Wagner, a name you and I are very familiar yep. with, Phantom. We've seen him play a few times. Yeah, Cam Johnson was the receiver. Yeah, Wagner, a uh, fighting zebra out of Lincoln High School. Miller back. He is under pressure. Gets rid of it down the left sideline. Good defense down there, and incomplete. Good pass by Miller. Almost made the connection. A well defended and a good pass pressure by the Beavers ends up in an incompletion. A great coverage there by defensive back number 21, Austin Adams, the son of Rockland High head coach Jason Adams. They've got a big game just down the road here later tonight. Good defense there by Adams, though. Yeah, Dietrich Ebenet, a name you said earlier, was putting pressure on Jack Miller on that one and uh, caused him to get rid of it, but uh, he put the ball down there pretty well down the sideline, incomplete. Thanks to the defense, it brings up second down. Miller wanted to go. He's under pressure again, gets away, throws it down the sidelines again and throws it away. Again, Beavers, I don't know if there's, uh, you know, uh, quarterback touches or something. I don't know what it is, but they've had a lot of contact on Jack Miller today. Haven't been able to bring him down that often. Yeah, and Miller really just running for his life out there. And to his credit, he's doing a good job avoiding these sacks. And this offensive line for the Rams just looks gassed here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they've been under pressure. And as you mentioned a couple of times, a lot of substitution for the Beavers defensively on that front front four, front seven, if you will. And it's really beginning to show. So third down. Ball in the 47-yard line. Miller has time this time, but nowhere to go. Now he's going to let it go down the left side on the sideline, knocked away defensively. Nice play by the Beavers on a pass that kind of looked like he gave up when he threw that one and almost connected with the wide receiver. And again, that was Adams with the uh, coverage there and the hit that kind of, I don't want to say jarred it loose because it, it was out there a little bit, but I think just good defense, we'll call it, from Adams right there. And now fourth and ten, and the Beavers' backups are going to be getting a lot of playing time next season, have a chance to make a big stand right here. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Miller back there had some time that time, couldn't really find anybody to throw to a, uh, a tribute to the defensive backs and their coverage. So fourth down. Miller under pressure again, and he's hit, and he stays up and throws it deep down the left side. Beavers are going to just let it go very wisely. There's a defensive back who was in position maybe to make a play. On fourth down, he let it go, and a great job. And the pressure really dictated that play again, Jordan. Yeah, and you know what I'm most impressed with is the uh, the play of defensive back Cooper Thompson right there, the uh, Roseville product, because it's very hard with a guy who hasn't been getting yeah. a ton of time all year 
to say, hey, don't go up and get that interception, but a good job by him to get the field position. And now 6.09 left on the clock. Second string offense coming in to get some work. I expect to see the ball on the ground a lot yeah, here. Yeah, Quincy Gallon, the quarterback, the uh, sophomore quarterback out of Antelope, I believe, is going to be in there for Kenny Leaf. Six foot two, 215 pounds. Let's see who his running backs are. Again, we've seen so many running backs, not really second string running backs. They're just guys who don't get as many carries as other guys. Gallon turns around, hands it right back up the middle, a little bit of a hole down inside the 40, down to the 45 yard line for a uh, gain of about three, second and seven. That was Torrey Hendrick on the carry there. And, you know, we talk about Gallon, and I know we've mentioned it a few times, but. For those who aren't aware, you know, Gallon coming in, second-string quarterback, but still a captain on captain this on the team. team. Not something yeah. you see very often. Yeah, you get a sophomore quarterback like Quincy Gallon. He shows a lot of leadership. His teammates reward him by naming him one of their captains. Gain of three for Turi Hendrick. Second and seven. 5.35 to go in this ballgame. Beavers with the lead at 41-6. to six. And up again, that is Hendrick again. He's got a little bit of room, and he's going to get down close to the 40, probably at the 41-yard line. So like you said, Jordan, you're going to see a lot of, you're not going to see the ball in the air. You're going to see a lot of running, and you're going to get a guy, Torrey Hendrick, who would be playing a lot for a lot of teams. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, Hendrick is a back that I think would be playing for most teams yeah. in Northern California. But when you're in a backfield like this, you are going to be splitting your carries. And I think that says something, though, about how unselfish this group is. These guys are here because they're bought into this system, and they're here because they want to win here. Yeah, it's true at the running back. It's true at the defensive back, at the defensive line, the offensive line. Every position is deep, and uh, every position has many guys who can play the position. So Gallon at third down, about four yards to go. He's going to hand it off again that time. That little hole kicking it to the outside. A really good run by Torrey Hendrick to get a first down down inside the 35. And you know, another point about Hendrick too, he's a guy that, yeah, right now he's coming in with the second team offense and whatnot, but we've seen plenty of games yeah. over the last two years where Hendrick has been not only mixed in with the first string, but we've seen a few where he's been the go-to back. So it just shows what confidence Coach O has in this running back room and how these guys can contribute no matter what offense they're working with. Yeah, this is a guy with uh, 35 carries, six yards a carry on the season, also six receptions. So he has been in a couple of ball games. He's behind Quincy Gallon right now as we go down to four minutes left to go in this one. going to hand it off to Hendrick, and I think we're going to have a motion. I think the wide receiver on the right side moved a little bit too early for the Beavers. And that'll set them back five, bring them back to the 38-yard line, in which they will do a first and 15. And, you know, at this point, too, I think uh, those five yards can safely say it's not going to hurt the Beavers in this one. But, you know, in a time where you're trying to kill the clock, it almost gives you more field to work with. It does. To where when you're averaging six, seven yards a carry, you essentially get another down in 40 more seconds to kill off the clock. Again, we mentioned the starting offensive line. We've got some uh, second-team offensive linemen in there now, and as you mentioned, Jordan, they're doing the same job as Gallon turns around and hands it to Hendrick, who slashes through the right side, gets down just down to the 35-yard line, so it'll set up uh, 12 yards to go for the first down as we go down under 3.30 to go in this one. Another mix of some substitutions. Coming in, one name that's interesting that we haven't really called yet, uh, he's been in the game but hasn't gotten any touches, is Brown, who's really been, yeah. been playing like a fullback and paving the way for the backs in front of him. Yeah, we talk about the Fab Four, but Elias Brown and Anthony Johnson also have been two backs that uh, have got, you know, it's kind of a six-pack situation. They've also got some carries, mostly late in games, but the, they've played uh, earlier on occasion. So Gallon hands it off again. Coming around the left side, a little bit of room by Henrik. He gets down inside the 30, so a pretty good run again by Ture Henrik. He did run out of bounds and stop the clock with 2.48 to go. Let's see where he is marked. It looks like right about the 27-yard line, so he's still four yards shy of a first down. And a good block on that play by the freshman tight end, A.J. Fast, out of Wheatland High School. He was able to kind of take the edge rusher away and keep that hole on the outside for Hendrick to get the big chunky yards. Yeah, if you see a guy kick it out and have a room with the left, it's either a good block or a hold. And this time it was a good block by the freshman. 
Third down, four yards to go. Gallon surveying the situation. We've got the running back behind Quincy. He's going to hand it to Terry Henrick, who's got a wide open hole, cuts it back of the 20 and gets down inside the 15-yard line. So Terry Henrick got himself uh, got himself one, one drive today, Jordan. He's making the most of it. Yeah, he really is. And at this point now, I think that's going to be the uh, drive that brings out victory formation. We'll see, actually. They might have to get one more first down here, but I can't imagine we're going to see anything different than runs up the middle and maybe a couple knees. First down at the 15-yard line after Hendricks' uh, run, who has, like we said, taken over this drive along with the offensive lineman as well. It's like another new back in that backfield. Might be Anthony Johnson. Let's see with... Uh, the handoff and he whoever it was he slipped unfortunately he was going to cut out to the right but he slipped and is down in the backfield for a loss of about two yards and that is uh oriello filippini uh -huh, filippini okay. who i'm going to appropriately nickname the italian stallion i think that's a of course that's fair name freshman genius. out of toke yeah. high school in lodi yeah well we've seen him i think we saw him with a I think he ran, uh, returned a punt for a touchdown this season, but that time he was uh, moving his legs a little bit too fast for the uh, ground, and he was tripped up. Well, Stallions tend to do that sometimes. Okay, all right. You made it. You had a nickname. Okay, that's great. Second down inside of uh, 50 seconds to go in this one. Gallon hands it off to Henrik again, and Henrik just gallops right through. Speaking of Stallions, goes all the way down to the five-yard line on what will probably be the last play of the game as Henrik uh, chewing up the yards here on this last drive, Jordan. Yeah, statement game right there, and Hendrick really making his presence known on this game. And we'll see if the uh, individual stats for him have updated, but looks like he comes in, finishes this one. Yep. Six carries, 38 yards, so... All on one drive for Hendricks. Yeah, six and a third carry. That's uh, going to be the last play of the game as the clock is winding down. A big win for American River College. They will return to the NorCal Championship game, and we will talk about this one in our postgame show coming up right after this. Our final score, American River College 41 and City College of San Francisco 6. We'll talk to you right after this. You're watching ARC Football presented by the Stones Radio Networks. <laughs> I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Placer County's best kept secret is back for another exciting summer at historic McBean Stadium. 33 action packed home games loaded with fun for the whole family. Local beer, wine, and eats. Fireworks, giveaways, theme nights, kid zone, and more. Come join in the fun and enjoy small town baseball with Major League Entertainment. Tickets on sale now at LincolnPotters.com. Lincoln Potters Baseball. Welcome into the post game show, sponsored in part by Ace Body and Towing. Back here at Beaver Stadium, Mark the Phantom Low here with you. George Georgeson to my right, Kenny Parker down on the field. We will talk to both of those gentlemen as we will talk about a Beavers win out here, 41 to 6. It looks like they have advanced. Well, they have advanced, and it looks like they will play San Mateo, who leads uh, Modesto 41 to 19 late in that game. First of all, guys, I want to talk about before the game, we talked about one impression you had on the season. Now, let's talk about one impression you took away from uh, this game today. Kenny, why don't you start us off? What, what's the one thing? that you took away from this game, the 41-6 to win for the Beavers? I mean, it was the same thing I said before the start of the game that I, that I took away from this season, and that's that it starts with the defense. The way that they swarm, the way that they're always together making those tackles, it suffocates the other team's offense, and it just sets the tone, and you can tell that the offense, the special teams, the rest of the players on this team know that they can rely on it. 
And uh, to that point, Kenny, uh, let me follow up. You know, the first play of the game or the first score of the game was a mistake by the uh, Rams and a play by the, uh, the Beavers special teams to uh, convert that bad snap into a touchdown. What kind of effect did that have on the, on the team on the sidelines? I mean, you could, you could tell, you know, they were focused and very, um, uh, you know, ready for the start of this game, and it just kind of relieved the pressure here on the sideline. You could kind of feel them relax a little bit and then go, okay, this is what we thought was going to happen, and it really then picked up the momentum and let them make those plays on offense as well. All right, Kenny, you be thinking about your keys for next week. I want to talk to Jordan Georgeson up here. And, Jordan, uh, your impression to, you know, your impression after watching uh, 60 minutes of action, the Beavers taking care of this one 41-6. to Well, you know, my big thing is I said they need to come into this game. They need to establish the run, and they did that right away. A couple big carries by Avant Jacobs, and I know that drive stalled. But then you come out, you get special teams touchdown, a stop. And then I know it was only the first quarter in 14 nothing, but you could tell by the body language when Riley ran that 40-yard oh, touchdown play, in yeah. to make it 14 nothing. It just felt like that blew the game wide open already. And it just, you could tell on all phases of the game, American River just executed so well. They bullied them in the trenches on both sides, and I really feel like that was a difference maker in this one. Yeah, the, to be fair, the Rams missing a couple of key players, including quarterback Dorian Hale in this one. Jack Miller came out, and I thought, Jordan, I thought he kind of acquitted himself quite well as far as coming in off, you know, not cold, but coming in off the bench. He hadn't had a lot of playing time this season, and he got better during the course of the game, but the Beavers just too much for him. So, guys, let's look ahead to next week. We will assume that the Beavers will be traveling down to San Mateo to take on the Bulldogs in a rematch of last year's championship game, and Kenny, if you were in the Beavers' locker room, what's what's one thing you think the Beavers have to work on or have to clean up or something to get ready for a team you know that uh, is at the top of the uh, rankings? I, I just think anytime you're going to play a team that good, you've got to avoid the self-inflicted wounds and the mistakes that you know they've fallen prey to on a few occasions this year. They always bounce back from the adversity that sometimes they create themselves, but they've really got to limit that when they're up against a team like they're going to be playing next week. Sounds good. Thank you. Kenny Parker, thank you for a great season down on the sidelines, and we'll wrap it up with you, Jordan. We talked about Kenny Leith. We both think that he's just, just an excellent, excellent player. He was not really on, it didn't seem like, at the beginning of the game today, and I'm going to assume that you think that if they're going to take care of Sam, Sam Mateo, he He's one guy that really has to be going from, from the word go. Yeah, and fairness to Leaf today, I mean, he wasn't really on necessarily, but he also didn't really need to be on where well, you're playing a San Mateo opponent that you need to be on your A game against. And, you know, I have full confidence that Leaf will bounce back. You know, everything we've seen from him tells me that he's going to have another great one. And I think the biggest thing for AR, we've seen these lulls all season. Mm, yeah. uh, hey, you know, 60-minute game, you play 54 great minutes and maybe have a little three, two, three-minute spans or something. You know, defense maybe gives up a big play, and I think the biggest thing is, especially offensively, you need to play a full 60-minute game next week, and I think that starts with Lee setting the tone early. Yeah, I think Kenny's right. I think they need to avoid the self-inflicted wounds, if you will, and I also think that we have, I think, you know, the, the, the the Beaver team is full of stars. I mean, you know, if you look on the defensive side, Josh Tremaine leads it, but there's a lot of other guys who played really great and played great all season. But if I look on the offensive side, Jordan, and I'm looking to a game like a game against a team like San Mateo, I'm looking to Kenny Leith, I'm looking to Avanti Jacobs, and I'm looking to the electrifying Robert Freeman. I'm saying those guys have to make some plays, especially on the road for the Beavers to come home with the title. Yeah, definitely. And I think the big thing that the Beavers are going to have to do is you know, we saw them march down the field, but it did feel like a lot of their plays and a lot of their offense today was explosive. And against a defense like San Mateo, you need to not expect those explosive yeah. plays to go your way. You need to find a way to string together drives like you had at the end of the first half of 10 plays, 75 yards, chewing seven minutes off the clock. Find ways to really move the ball down the field methodically rather than relying on these explosive plays because you're not guaranteed to get those. Yeah, you need big plays, but you need consistency more than that. Okay, that's it from us uh, today from Beaver Stadium, our final again, American River College 41 and uh, City College of San Francisco 6. On behalf of Kenny Parker down the sidelines, great job, Jordan Georgeson. Always great to work with you, the great Stones McCoy behind the glass. My name is Mark the Phantom Low. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Stones Radio Networks. Go Beavers!